Welcome to Kind of Funny's Harry Potter in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing wow. every yeah. movie Woo. in the so Harry excited. Potter movie universe. Uh, I'm Tim Geddes. This is Andy Cortez. That is Kevin Coelho. And over there, we got Nick Scarpino. I'm very excited to do this one. We'll introduce that in a second, Nick. Don't don't worry. Don't you worry your pretty little <laughs> face here. Uh, I, I'm very excited for this. This is the first time we're doing a, a franchise in review, and it feels like a while because mm. we had mm. a lot of like... You know, updates to the MCU and review, mm-hmm. XCU and review, Fast and Furious and review. We did a couple of Disney things. We got a solid eight week stretch here going through the Harry Potter movies, movies that I have never seen before. So that's Whoa. my question to you before we get into this. Like, mm-hmm. What was your first impression? You had not, you obviously have been Harry around Harry Potter because your brother and I are like the hugest Harry Potter fans. The, the full, planet. full transparency of all this is I saw the first and second movie mm-hmm. in theaters. That's it. Yeah. Did you so, see? So you saw them in theaters. I saw them in theaters. Okay, that was a long time ago. That right? was a long time. Two thousand one, baby. Yeah, it was yeah. Very, like my. I, I've told the story before, but my um, entry in the Harry Potter series in general was my brother's ex wife. A long time ago, was like I want to go see Harry Potter, and he didn't want to go with her, and I had nothing to do, so I was like, I'll go with you. She's like, I'll buy you snacks. I was like, deal. I'm in. And I went, and I was like, this is gonna be dumb. This is gonna be a dumb kids movie. And I saw it, and I was like, huh, you I fell in love. really liked it. It wasn't until I went, until Chamber of Secrets came out, though, that I was like, I was faced with a dilemma. I was like, do I just give in to the fact that I think I love Harry Potter and go see this? <laughs> and I watched, I went and saw Chamber of Secrets, and I was like, oh, shit. And <laughs> I immediately, your eyes you know, I know, oh. like, flash forward, I, I saw, I saw, and I hadn't read any of the books at this point, and I immediately knocked on my neighbor's door, and I knew she had all of them. And I was like, can I borrow the third and fourth and like the third book? She goes here. And she just gave me the third book. Yeah. This is before Order of the Phoenix had come out. And I, I merit, like I just ran through both those books real fast, went back and read the first two. And I was like, this is unbelievable. And then you, you have that bittersweet moment where you go, wait a minute. I, I have, have to wait. wait. <laughs> yeah. Like two uh, more years. And I had to wait. I had to wait for Order of the Phoenix to come out. Mm. Like it wasn't even out yet. Damn. I was like, oh, this is the worst reality ever. Life's hard. Yeah. I terrible. also, I did read the first book in school. It was like required reading at some point. Oh, like interesting. Fourth or fifth grade. That's a great school. Yeah. Wow. Oh. You went That's to Hogwarts. Hard. But that was a long time ago as well. Watched this movie. Didn't remember most of it. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting going back in. Like I was telling the guys, I was like, I, this, this series means so much to me that I, I had a little bit of anxiety. Like I, could, I had to really psych myself up to hit play on that first movie because going back through the whole thing again is just... It's such a journey. It's definitely, it's definitely a journey. Uh, so this is Harry Potter in review. Like I said, for the next eight weeks, we're going to be ranking and reviewing each of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, you can get this live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com or podcast services. Just search for kind of funny reviews. We'd really appreciate if you guys subscribe to us on those podcast services and left nice reviews because it helps us in the algorithm. Good job there, Andy. It looks like we're fighting. Um, <laughs> if you want to get this show ad-free, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producer, David Mintel. My my free, free, my free, he my did free. it. Oh, magic. There's a lot of magic going Everywhere. on. Yeah. Yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> Gotta my love free. it. I'm so scared he's going to start talking shit. So before, before we get into <laughs> the, the actual movie stuff, Nick, there's houses we, in we this. Had a, so, okay, we <laughs> talked about this, and one of the fun things about doing the series is going back through and making sure everyone is the correct house. Um, and Andy had some issues earlier this week. Now, I've come to the conclusion that I am Ravenclaw. It's unfortunate, but that I retested last time, and I did it twice, and it, it was like, no, motherfucker, you're Ravenclaw both times. Now, Andy said, listen, I'm Gryffindor. And I was like, I don't believe you. We all know you're Hufflepuff, and it's fine. And then other people have said that you're clearly Ravenclaw, and I can see that, too. I can see that, too. You, What happened? Did you retest last night? I retested last night, yeah. And it turns out... Burn blue, so dude. Andy, you can't Andy see walks in. Burn audio listeners. Burn blue. <laughs> and Nick welcomes him to the claw. <laughs> All Nick says is, welcome to the team. And I have no idea what he's talking about. And I yeah. turn around I'm like, what? And he goes, and he's mouthing and I was doing hand to stuff. RC didn't work. I, <laughs> and I, I, quickly, I don't know what he's doing. I still. quickly transitioned over to Ravenclaw. <laughs> right. And, and I was like, that was you mastered it though. Claw. Yeah. Yeah. Claw. This oh. makes a lot of sense. Now I it's really so cool, like everyone. It. Before we started the show, Tim's like, I want to be a part of Ravenclaw, and I was like, you're missing out on what's blue, Slytherin and has you guys get the dope. But Slytherin gets this. Slytherin. Oh, let's go. You can like stick your tongue on it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I am Slytherin. God. Yeah. yeah, I have to be. Yeah, yeah. I don't Part think Tim is Slytherin. I don't know. I, what am I? I think Tim could be. Ra- I think he could also be Ravenclaw. Uh, no, he's. I do because I mean, Ravenclaw could be. Yeah, but because Ravenclaw is like Ravenclaw's main traits are that you're like you're one of the people that like sits back and just kind of watches and just like figures out how to 
put like put everyone in the spot to do what you want them to do. That's like a Ravenclaw thing. Ravenclaws are like I, cunning and and cold, and that and that, that I could see that in you. That's I've Slytherin. Only, <laughs> cunning and cold are very Slytherin traits. I've only seen one movie at this point, mm-hmm. but from what I've seen. I, I, not all Slytherins are bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, sure, yeah, the ones yeah, we're yeah. seeing, they're fucking little there's brats. There's fine people on both sides, guys. But, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, well, I'm honestly, sure that there's someone in the back of Slytherin that's just like, I'm just going to ride this out. And that's me. <laughs> that would be <laughs> <laughs> so like, but, but that's honestly, and Kevin and I were talking about this earlier, that's one of the things I really appreciate about this series is that they take characters and there is just a house that's that's full of people that that, that are... I'll say morally ambiguous. Like Slytherin is a house where like people, great wizards have come from Slytherin, but they've done, some people have done good things, some people have done bad things. There's a lot of weird gray area in Harry Potter, even with a lot of like the the violence that they, they that how they treat violence against kids and stuff, where it's like, listen, you're in this. There's a great, there's a moment where Dumbledore does the announcements when they go into the Great Hall and he's like, uh, for anyone, uh, the third floor corridor to the right is off limits for anyone that doesn't want to die a horrible death. And then he just goes around, and it's just normal. We're like, and Harry's like, "This is a world that has, yeah. hero." But, but to everyone else, like, I no, go this, back is, home. this is a world that has consequences. And like, yeah, we're we're not going to treat you like a dumbass kid. If you're going to be stupid and go up to that quarter, you're going to eat by a fucking three headed dog. You deserve also, it. Yeah. Also, uh, the when like he's about to go play Quidditch for the first time, yeah. and like the coach is like, "Ah, don't worry, it's fine." He's like, "How was your first time?" He's like, "I don't, I don't remember, remember it. it. Yeah. I got knocked out about two minutes in." Yeah, he's like, "I woke up <laughs> in the hospital two weeks later." Yeah. It's Oliver Wood. Poor Magic Oliver Wood. Yeah, Barrett and Alyssa say that I am like just the the another manifestation of Luna Lovegood. Yeah. No. I don't I, see that as not much. Even close. So here's the other I thing. Totally no see future that, spoilers. We need to remember sure. that. I don't know who the fuck Luna Lovegood she's, is. She's you're telling me of Oliver so Wood and Luna well, Lovegood and cool. you're going to tell me this ain't a porn movie. So a lot of a lot of this first movie is really just setting up like all the characters in all the world mm-hmm. and that's one of its, I think I, that's the criticism I've seen and, and we talked earlier where you were like it moves very weird and there's a lot of shit thrown at you at the same time but I think it worked better in books because you're like, oh, I'm just being introduced to this world. In the movie, you're like, I feel like it's moving fast. Like, who's Madame Hooch? What's going fast. on with these flying? Mm. I like it. I love this movie. But um, you don't get a sense of the other houses so much in this. You get a sense of Slytherin. You get, and you get the sense in the same way of X Men of like, oh, that's the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Yeah. And yeah. these are the good guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just but like, like but who you, gets points? But, just but, the but, good guys. But later you start seeing like the other more fascinating characters from Hufflepuff yeah. and Ravenclaw, and they all start meeting, especially when Order of the Phoenix happens, when they're all sort of forced together. But that's a future spoiler. So later. today we are talking about <laughs> Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, aka. Don't the give Philosopher's it to Stone. Don't give it to him. Don't let them have that. No, no, no. We're, we're sticking it. with sorcerers. Do you I love know that they the, recorded the both lines? Still, yeah, the yeah. subtitles are still philosophers. Well, in, in uh-huh. England, the yeah. book came out. It was the Philosopher's Stone. Because yeah. philosopher means something, I guess, different in the UK than it does here. It's weird. So they recorded the any time the Philosopher or Sorcerer's Stone was named, they did different cuts where they say different things. But the only characters that ever speak those words are Harry, Hermione, or Ron. Everyone else just, just says the stone. Oh, the stone. Dumbledore never. Because they didn't want to have it. It. those guys have Smart. to double up on lines and Smart. stuff. It's like so game dev. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. None of the real actors have to do it. Uh, this movie was released on November 16th, 2001. Mm. That's crazy. Wow. So long ago. That's a long time ago. But honestly, I, I, for You're some reason, 21? I thought it was like late 90s. I don't know why. I, the like, books were. Yeah, I expected it to. But the books didn't finish rolling out until like the or like the mid 2000s. It was 2007. Aughts, right? I don't think the CG was fantastic, but there were moments where I was like, "Oh, this looks better, a lot better than I remember than I assumed I, there, it was going to be." I feel like there's a couple scenes that are like, "Oh man, it looks like crap." Yeah, sure. Anytime, there's nothing wrong. But with the snake yeah. in the beginning, I was like, "Oh, not bad." There's, so like, the snake wasn't bad. The, yeah. the Quidditch sequence is a little rough, and yeah. the troll sequence is horrible. The problem is anytime they do full character CG, yeah, it bad. just doesn't work. Yeah, and yeah. the whole Quidditch thing, they're just like gooey people. Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah. Well, when, It didn't uh, work that well. Was it Neville that, that uh, like goes off when yeah, yeah, like yeah. falls? Uh, Neville yeah. falls yeah. when they're training, yeah. but then the so other people, first. when Oliver gets knocked out, that's a that right. actually that, that, has, that effect wasn't that bad. But then there's another beater on the uh, Gryffindor team that gets knocked out. Another just, beater, it's yeah. bad. Neville Longbottom, uh, yeah. I swear to God, <laughs> you guys. Well, I'm telling you right now, brother, you better strap in because you're gonna love all these characters by the end of this. I'm telling Directed, you, right, that, this is a shocker to Chris me. Columbus. By Chris Columbus. Do you know who Chris Columbus is, Andy? No. Let me blow your goddamn mind. Chris Columbus, not Christopher Columbus, <gasps> uh, is known for directing films such as Home Alone, yep. Home Alone 2, Mrs. Doubtfire. No yep. wonder the music's mm-hmm. identical. And John it, Williams. It's identical. And it, yeah, John, John Williams did both. Uh, and then he also does the, the second Harry Potter movie mm-hmm. coming up. Um, he also wrote Gremlins and the Goonies. Yeah, Chris Columbus yeah. is awesome. And, 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 and I credit him for really helping to like produce this series because he go, he he goes on as a producer. I think he produced the rest of the the, the other six movies. 
uh, in the series. And it's great because he was like, I, the, I'm burned out on, on directing these, but I do want to make sure that there's some level of like, cohesion. cohesion as they start messing around with. You'll see as it, it, with uh, number three, they bring in Alfonso Cuaron and he completely changes the visual style. But the movie itself still still feels like a Harry Potter movie, which is good. And so speaking of John Williams, it's like there's just a magic to Fucking John Williams. A John Williams score Go. makes a world. You Go. know, and when you add that God, to beautiful. like aesthetics and design that actually is trying to, to do something like Hogwarts, the scene where they're rowing up and you just see it for the first it's time. So it's so cohesive. Like, That's a great scene. Yeah. It's matches like you, you just believe. You're like, all right, cool. His yeah. and, and I, I misremembered this movie because I could have sworn it started off with just the bells. It doesn't. It starts off with the orchestral theme. I think later the movie start off with just that dun, dun, the little like just a little bit of the bell. But man, I mean, read this first line that I wrote here. I just want to hear like, this is, is Halloween. Goat. This is He's Halloween. He's the fucking <laughs> 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 uh, a budget of 125 million, a box office of 975.1 yeah. million, yeah. and a runtime of an impossibly long I know. two hours and 32 oh, minutes. So I heard you guys having this conversation in the other room yesterday, and me and Gia had the exact same thing. We're going into this, it was like, it's gonna be nice having like shorter movies, like we're mm. going in. Because you'd expect these movies to be what? No. 145. They're all like two and a half hours. Yeah, and so the reason good. is I think they wanted to, and this is another reason why I think the series is good as a whole, is I think they really were trying to like cram as much from the books in this as possible. Like Barrett will go through later as we get to some of the things they left out, but they didn't leave out much. There's yeah. not a ton of like Matt. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. any major plot points they left out. There's just some stuff later in the third act that could have been a bit longer, but you can see for reasons of editing, why, they're like, yeah. we don't need to put the shit in here. Yeah, also, it would have been a little convoluted to include that anyway. I was talking to Nick about, you know, going back and, you know, we had just finished Lion King and we finished uh, Aladdin. And like, you're going back to the, see these old movies in the late 90s, mid 90s. Yeah. And you're like, oh, these movies are an hour and a half. And I had the same sort of thought going into this. And then I paused it. I was like, oh, my God, there's a fucking hour and a half left. <laughs> like, I, it, it, to me, though, it's one of those things. I haven't seen this movie in so long that it was actually it didn't. The time didn't bother me. But I, I did. I did sort of get to the midway part and go like, wow, they, I forgot this was a two and a half hour long movie. But yeah. I love every second. I, I'm glad it. you all weren't waiting for me to finish it because I, it took me a while. Like, Because I had to pause yeah. and like, go do shit. And so. I think going back and watching it after all of them when you know what happens, it's kind of like watching episode one of Game of Thrones where yeah. it's like this like, oh, this is so yeah, small. Look at, this like, look, look at how far yeah. they came. But it's like just watching it kind of dry. Now I'm like, holy crap. This, it's a world build and I get it and I'm mm -hmm. excited for the next ones. But like. As a movie, I was like, I'm not having a good time watching really? this. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's oh. unfortunate. Yeah. But again, I, I get it. Like, I'm in. I'm totally in. And, like, I love so many elements of it. But it's like, it really just felt like a bunch of things that are just drawn out. And I, But I feel like that was purposeful. Like, it, I feel like this one was a little bit, they were trying to be a little bit more cinematic uh, with, like, the, the way they shot stuff to kind of be like, look at how crazy this world is and, like, bask in it for a moment. Yeah, there are moments, and that's what I like about yeah. this. Like the moment, this really is Harry's like trying to find where he fits into the world. Yeah. And I love. There's a couple moments in this film that I especially just love, where they, as uh, the filmmakers, take a second and we just sit with Harry for a second as mm -hmm. he's like looking out over the lake when he first gets to the dormitories. And there's also just another scene where he's by himself for Christmas because the the Dursleys don't want him, and he's totally fine with that because this has become his new home. Yeah. And that's mirrored in the last line where you know, like we see him during Christmas time where he's walking around and just sort of. He has the run of the castle, and it's so cool. And then at the end, when Hermione's like, it's weird to be going home. He's like, I'm not really going home. Not really. And because Hogwarts is his new home. I and mean, that was my thing is, so fucking good. even though I, I didn't overall like in, super enjoy the movie, that line, when it hit that part, I was like, look at you. I'm like, let's fucking go. Hey, guy, let's yeah. fucking go. Hey, guy, I'm yeah. one right that's now, your, That's dude. your family line. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, I was just like, <laughs> oh, like, shit. But that's the thing. It really is. I mean, you joke, not all jokes aside, Harry Potter really is all about family. Like, it is about him finding these people day one and it's so that's the what i love about jk rowling is that she she captured that feeling of like you going to school for the first time and you're you're scared and you don't know where you're going to fit in and then you meet the people that are going to be your friends forever and they're 11 like they're that's 11. the thing is like mm -hmm. they're real 11 year olds like, that are yeah. acting like 11 year olds i'm like all right i, I yeah. can fuck with this and like it's middle I, school age right yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. it's sixth grade and i'm like, like you know, this chronicle six through 12th, right? Yeah, uh, yeah seven yeah. years. The school seven yeah. years. Every book is a year, which is another cool device that I like. Because yeah, every totally. book expands that year, that year frame. I got some little fun facts. Go for it. <laughs> the Chamber of Secrets facts? I don't know. Uh, yes, the Chamber of Secrets. The, the Chamber of Truths? Sure. Chamber of Facts. Truths, or what's, the truth, of facts? what's the truth potion? Truth just sounds cool. Uh, Veritaserum. 
Nah, that's too that, much. Yeah, that's way too much. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some ch- Chamber of Truths for you. Truth Let's win Guardian <laughs> Leviosa. Open these the trips. Chamber of Truths. I'm opening the, the Chamber of Truths. Uh, the the, the last scene, the train movie. scene, mm-hmm. was actually the first scene that they shot. Really? Which is always a weird thing. Like, I understand that's just how Why? stuff it's works. Why? But it's like, this, it's so often that the last scene of the movie is the very first thing that they, they did. So just a little fun, little interesting something. But uh, at first, producers wanted to combine the first two or three books into one film. Oh, Terrible. But then they realized they could make so much more money by doing each book individually. Uh, the reason the producers wanted to, at, uh, so originally they wanted to animate the movie, um, but they wanted to to do that or combine them was so that because they were concerned that delays in filming would result in the child actors aging too much to continue their roles and require recasting. But because Rowling nixed the idea of doing either, the producers decided to film the entire series back to back so the same actors could play the roles throughout the entire yeah. thing. And because of this, because they were dumbass little kids, there was a bunch of rules of labor stuff that they like made it very complicated every child working on the film still continued with their education receiving three to five hours of schooling every day they didn't receive any homework though uh because of their young age and those pesky child labor laws radcliffe watson and grint were only allowed to work for nine hours a day just not of enough. those nine hours one was for lunch and they had a required 15 minute break for every hour yeah i mean so they only actually filmed for four and a half hours a day the three main actors were forbidden from skiing for the duration of the film. <laughs> to not get yeah, yeah. Can't break anything. Too dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I will say though I think they like going back and looking at them. I'm like I'm so impressed by how much these kids can hold those scenes mm-hmm. at, at that young age. Specifically Emily uh, yeah. uh, Emma Watson, who I think Hermione in this movie is the standout performance. I think Absolutely. she fucking nails this, and she nails that vibe of being annoying at first, but then being like you 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 very quickly as a fan of the series go like. As long as her mind is there, shit will get taken care of. Like she's the one that's confident and and, and actually does the studying. And and they kind of talk about that when they award the points at the end. Those the reason they get those points at the end is what those characters then become known for going on. Is that like she's known for her intellect and like cool intellect. And she's cool under fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry's obnoxiously brave and just runs where he's not supposed to run. And Ron's, Ron, known for his plot Ron's more just the glue that keeps them both mm-hmm. together. He plays real good chess. He plays real good chess. Yeah. You know what? That's uh, what he's known for. Chuck, mate. As soon as like I'm watching this movie and I I don't uh, I'm seeing like early stages of Hermione. I immediately think of like her arc reminds you of Topanga. Where she's yeah, like yeah. hair, dude. Like she, yeah, she starts yeah. off as like kind of like the really like annoying, Smart, annoying. nerdy, like yeah. always racing their hands, always by the book, and it's like we're gonna get in trouble. We shouldn't be doing this sort of thing. Yeah, I, I just thought Topanga for some reason. I love yeah. that. And true to her character, Watson overprepared for her role, memorizing not only her own lines but also everyone else is awesome. <laughs> if you watch carefully, you can see her mouthing other people's lines oh, that's in the adorable. movie. That's that's and like, that's I really saw a cool. super cut of it. It's she's just literally in the background like. What an Ivy grad. <laughs> what an Ivy League she's, grad. She's awesome. <laughs> that's also cool. bad. That's, like, that's, that's not, not doing good. your job right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Like, but I mean, when you're 11 years yeah, old and you're nervous kid, yeah. and you're a kid, you don't really Was act that much. Was this the first thing that she had acted in? I think it's I the first know. thing all of them did, I think. They're I know they did an open casting call for Harry Potter, and they yeah. saw, like, thousands of kids. Big deal. And then when they picked, Dan, like, Radcliffe, I don't think he had done anything before. I don't know about the other ones, though. I'm looking it up. Yeah. yeah well, is it, was it this movie, or... Was there a Harry Potter movie where Daniel Radcliffe's voice was somebody else's voice because it's of puberty? One. It's this one, I Is think. It? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. I think. I don't know if there's facts that you saw on this one, but for sure, no. either this one or Chamber of Secrets. I think where they had to go back and redub some of his lines. But I think with another cha- actor. Right? I think in Chamber they all have deeper voices. Because okay. it's a couple years later, and they are deep into that puberty area. Yeah. Oh, so this is Daniel. This wasn't Daniel Radcliffe's first uh, movie. He was oh, in a movie called The Tailor of Panama. He was in The Tailor of Panama. Apparently, Panama. man, that movie's terrible. That movie is <laughs> The Tailor of Panama is one of the top five on my list worst movies ever made. To the point where I have only walked out of a handful of movies, and that's one of them. Wow. wow. It's uh, a really fault. bad Jeffrey Rush, uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan movie. It's fucking terrible. But what a combo. just deplorable. But it was Rupert Grint and Emma Watson's uh, first role. Okay, cool. There you go, Nick. I think it's time for the plot. Tim, just in case you were wondering. Oh, I, I thought we were gonna do a theme song. Oh, do you want to do it? I thought we yeah. did. Did you do Greg. anyone? Greg Miller's not here, but but, fe- but we're sorry not Nick Ty. It is time for the plot. I forgot the lyrics. I'm okay, I'll get it next time. Like, okay. Ladies time. and gentlemen, the wand chooses the wizard, not the other way around. And we're going to start this thing like every damn movie should start with John, John Williams. Williams. Fucking unbelievable theme. He's the goat. If you come at me, don't even fucking come at me, because John Williams is the goat. Uh, we start with that amazing orchestral theme, and of course, uh, the the title, which is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, in that awesome like lightning bolt gold lettering over the stormy background, which, spoilers, so cool. it becomes a hallmark of the entire franchise, which is great. And 
we dolly or excuse me, we crane down to Privet Drive, the sign of Privet Drive, where there's an owl on top. And I looked up and I was like, who is this owl? I could not find who this owl is. Maybe Barrett, you can figure that out while I'm reading. Uh, of course, the grand old wizard Dumbledore comes out of the fog uh, and he takes all the street lights away with the Deluminator, which comes back a little bit later. But I had to look up the name of that really damn cool. thing. Click, Deluminator. Click click, 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 click. He made it. Click, he click. It. Boom. It's very, very cool. Uh, takes all the street lights away to make it a little darker and then looks over and sees a cat. And it's not just a cat, it is a trans. Figured trans something, uh, Professor trans- McGonagall. Yeah, figured, I think. Uh, uh, she's a she's an animagus. It's an animagus. That's right. The tabby cat. She's transfiguration, right? Yeah. The yeah. tabby cat using the movie ran away during filming. <laughs> <laughs> it came back two days later. <laughs> this is my favorite part from this website here. It refused to tell anyone where it had been, but it didn't stop smiling for days. What? Uh, that seems like what a weird, weird ass editorial. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is yeah, very concerned. Of course, something has something drastically bad has happened. Uh, and she's like, are the rumors true? Is the boy okay? And he's like, the boy's fine. And as she, as they start saying that, who comes out of the sky and is a dope ass triumph uh, flying motorcycle? Hagrid. Hagrid. That's right. Ruby is Hagrid. Like, she says, are the rumors true? And he responds, yes, good and bad. They're true. Like, that's, that's again. Of course, that's Hagrid really cool. is uh, carrying a little bundle of joy with him. Uh, we put, uh, you know, uh, uh, we walk him over to uh, one private. Is it one private drive? Yeah. Yeah. No. Four. One, four. Four private drive. Yeah. Uh, put him out. He puts puts the bundle on the uh, the front door with a little bit of a note, uh, and then of course, as we see, we finally see Harry for the first time with the iconic lightning bolt scar. Uh, and he's like, she's like, are you sure you want to leave it with these people? Because I've been watching them for a few days, and they are the worst kinds of people. I, I don't get it. I They're really don't. I really don't get it. Well, I think J.K. It's- Rowling decided to put the thing like slightly off centered because like in the book on the covers, like it is centered. And she's like, I didn't want it like that. But it was too late. <laughs> yeah. They read it, so she's like, "Well, I'm gonna correct it with my movie." So. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, the reason, of course, they left in there is, is summed up in one line where she's like, "Are you sure you don't want to take him?" And he's like, "She's like, he's gonna be famous after what happened." And Dumbledore is like, "Yeah, if he's gonna be famous, it'll ruin him." Basically, like I'd rather him grow up away from that. And of course, he grows up very humble because Dumbledore is. There's a potential that he's like, this thing just happened, and you find out what it is later. Of course, he Voldemort was killed by this kid, so he's worried that this kid's going to be like, if he grows up to be an asshole, he'll be a powerful wizard asshole. Let's have him instead. instead he <laughs> Let's have him with... instead grow up in an abusive <laughs> That's my thing. It, I'm like, out of all the options, like I don't care like if they're actually related or not, or they are. Leave the, him at with the, the fucking and shit. fire station. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Could have handled that better, Dumbledore. Uh, Dumbledore uh, my apologies. That's man, how yeah. that's how this starts. It starts with the theme, and then of course uh, we see the lightning bolt scar, and then we go to the title with the gold title over the climb, which was the iconic title. Uh, flash forward, and you're like, "Great idea, Dumbledore!" Because guess where the Dursleys made this kid fucking grow up under the stairs. Yeah. He gets a tiny little space under the stairs where he gets nothing, and then that piece of shit Dudley just what it's his birthday, piece of shit. and he's just stomping, stomping around those damn stairs now. Yeah. Kevin made no, no, no made mention no, that he was I like, mean, oh my god, I, I'm Dudley. I, no, you are I Dudley. Didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't <laughs> What'd say, you say that. What'd you say then? I said we were we were at Didums. Okay, we were at Didums walking around. And I noticed I remembered that as a kid, I was like, oh yeah, one Christmas I got like 15 presents. It was crazy. And then I was like, oh man. You know? Like Dudley. I'm kinda like Dudley. I'm kinda like Dudley <laughs> in that one aspect of a bunch of presents. Just like, that aspect, then. Just Basically, that one aspect. Yeah, they aspect. turn Harry into like the house servant. He is just waiting on them. And they're so to feed. mean to him. They're just so mean constantly. to him. And you don't understand why. No, no one does. Until much later. But that's his future spoiler. Doesn't um, uh, doesn't uh, the mom remind you a lot of Molly Shannon? Yes, it's weird. she's awesome. Aunt Petunia. <laughs> yeah. So we meet, of course, we meet, of course, Dudley, uh, Aunt Petunia, and Uncle Vernon, and we they are they are Harry Potter's blood aunt. She's the, she's the sister of his mother, um, and it's Dudley's birthday, and he's just a giant piece of shit. I will say as a, <laughs> as a fun, I will say as a fun note though, uh, that actor popped up in a movie that I was not expecting. He's in one of the vignettes in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, oh. and if you have if you've seen it, he's the guy that like has no, no arms, legs, no, no legs. arms, and he's very skinny now, and he's a phenomenal actor. Oh. He has no legs. In, no, in, in, in the, the Ballad in the... of Buster Scrubs, he has no arms and no legs. Got it. And it's a it, in one of the vignettes. You should check it out. It's very, very good. Of course, it's Dudley's birthday, and he gets pissed off because he's like, how many presents are there? And he's like, 36. He's like, 36. I had 37 last year. And Aunt Petunia, being just the rollover that she is, is like, we got we're going to get later. you another one when we get to after the zoo. We'll go to the zoo first. And then, of course, Uncle Vernon pulls Harry aside and is like, nothing better happen right now. And you're like, what the fuck happened before? What has Harry been doing? Maybe he deserves to be under the stairs because he's a What's psychopath he who's torturing everyone with yeah. his magic his magic Jedi powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go to the zoo, and of course, they go to the reptile area where Dudley's just of a, course. 
What's that? I'm just like, are you and of course they go to the reptile area. Which is, it was weird that we just started the reptile area, but it's fine. I mean, yeah, like so they weird. don't. <laughs> it makes sense. Like, <laughs> that, no, I'm but like they don't museum. even set Do up that see he's them at walking the, into like, the entrance. Do it all, you know? It's fine. Well, uh, the, what? okay, we'll move on. Uh, it's just reptile areas where magic happens for Harry, right? <laughs> I get it, but I was like, of course they go to the reptile area, and he was like, that's weird. And then no I was worries, like, why no do they start at the reptile area? Like, why wouldn't they start at the reptile area? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I was just like, saying, what's happening? I was just think it's funny that you say, of course they do. <laughs> like, <laughs> because for people who know the series and yeah. how, it, how it progresses, the reptile area becomes very, very important. Got and, it, his, and his ability to talk to snakes becomes hugely important. Deal. Cool. So he yeah. speaks, what is it, uh, sl- snake Sl- tongue? Slither. No, parcel tongue. Parcel tongue. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my god, that's what you're here for, Achievement Hunter. (laughs) Mute your mic, pop it up when you need to. They go to the reptile area, and uh, Dudley's being a complete shithead to this anaconda because it's not moving. And Harry looks over, and as he walks away, Harry looks over and says, I'm sorry, man. Like, I know he's a a big piece of shit. I've been poisoning him for years, but he just won't (laughs) fucking die. He He just just won't fucking (laughs) die. And the, uh, the anaconda's like, it's all good. And he's like, holy shit, can you understand what I'm talking about? And he's like, yeah, bro. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, Oh, this is weird. I've never My talked to snakes before. My brother's a piece of shit, too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Dudley sees the snake animated and comes over and starts banging on the glass again. And Harry looks over and like, maybe he knows he can do this. Maybe he no, doesn't. Maybe he he's no torturing idea. Dudley. He's but the mad. glass disappears and, and Dudley falls into uh, the, the water with the snake. And then the snake like looks over, get, escapes, looks over at Harry, goes, thanks. And moves away. And you're like, oh, we well, can speak parcel tongue. That's pretty cool. A uh, term that I just remembered off the top of my head with no help uh-huh. from Barrett whatsoever. Um... Of course, Uncle Vernon is not happy about this because when Dudley goes to get out, the glass is there and he's stuck in here, just like that poor kid was stuck in the fucking tube oh, and Harry and oh my god, oh, Willy terrifying. Wonka, and yeah. it was terrible. I was like, that kid's gonna drown in there. Also, and how scared are you at, at, if you're at the zoo? Just this giant fucking python is <laughs> just escapes, slithering by. You're just like, oh my god, and it's like they threatening you. you. They've they've always got like zookeepers around to stop. People from dying. I do not trust the zookeepers. Yeah. <laughs> like, the tiger snake is out, out of its cage. Um, of course, uh, Uncle Vernon's like, what the hell happened? He's like, I don't know. The glass was there one second. It's gone. It was like, it's magic. And Vernon has a very triggered reaction to this where he's like, there's no such thing as magic that you're just out of your fucking mind, kid. Whatever you just saw, you're crazy. And maybe it's some of the drugs that you're poisoning Dudley with, like trace residues on Why your hand. Why do you it keep talking matter. about these drugs? Because <laughs> I would with. fucking kill that kid if no, I had I, yeah, it makes sense. I'm glad that he didn't and murder the whole family in their sleep. Uh, meanwhile... Uh, they go back home, and, uh, and, and you know, after Vernon has given him the what for, uh, an owl comes by and delivers Ooh. a letter, an old looking letter, and it's labeled from Hogwarts, and that's cool. And Harry goes to look at it, and then Vernon snatches it out of his hand and sees that it's from Hogwarts. He's like, "Nope, we're not doing this again. This is not happening." And then more owls start coming. And at this point, if I were one of the neighbors, I'd be like. What the, the fuck is going on is with this owl going infestation on. that's happening? Infestation um, is the right word. Yeah, it's an owl infestation. And owls are scary, too. They're terrifying. Mm-hmm. If you've ever seen a, uh, a you imagine how owl, that would be? the scariest thing you've Featherless ever seen. Featherless owl? Yeah, they're terrifying. I feel like we've looked it up before. They're small. Yeah. <laughs> they're feeble? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's when so someone, you think it's buff and they take fly. off the superhero outfit and you're like, oh, you didn't work out at all for this role, bro. You're tiny. It's whatever Shazam. Um, he worked out. Of course, outside owls are everywhere. Uh, Uncle Vernon's like, this is, this won't do. They keep delivering notes. He goes as far as to screw a, a two like a, a piece of wood over the mail slot so they can't put him in there. And then the owls are like, dude, we're fucking magic. Yeah. You can't fuck with us. As, <laughs> as they're making Harry wait on them hand and foot and deliver cookies to their fucking piece of shit son Dudley, uh, that another letter comes through the chimney. And Harry grabs it, and then they snatch it out of his hand, and then boom, it's done. It's a fucking tornado oh, of letters. Man. You think you're going to fuck with us? We're going to fuck with you right back. We're Hogwarts, son. Hogwarts, right? It's a cool Greg Hogwarts. Also Doesn't a matter. really ugly name for a school. That's yeah, great. Hogwarts, terrible name. Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any reason about for that? that? Like great. warts for I was uh-huh. think, I was thinking that. Because that's Harry Potter, man. Again. When he looked at it. You would think any other it. series would have named it something beautiful, and JK is like, no, it's going to be something horrible, because... That's this world. There's horrible and good stuff all at the sure. same time. Uh, of course, the the the, the, the Durs is like, no, we're gonna fuck this. We're gonna leave. We're gonna go to a remote lighthouse on an island. The scariest, no one, it's the scariest place. How'd the they get of there? A, 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 a torrential boat. downpour sea. Like a little boat. They're like, went, like uh, Harry, make us float. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> smack him in the head. <laughs> and this is where they really, they really kind of tug on the heartstrings here, right? Because yeah. Harry's sleeping on the fucking floor. Of course, that piece of total dog shit. Dudley gets the the couch, and Harry's got to sleep on the floor, and he's dry, and we we kind of nobody sweeped in like seven. No, years. no one swept in seven years ever, probably since the fucking Renaissance. And they look <laughs> <What>? over, <laughs> we dolly over and crane over to Harry, and what's he doing? He's drawing himself his own birthday cake. This is so sad, because, but also because these fucking utter pieces of human trash have forgotten this kid's birthday, and they don't care. 
And it's, his, and it's his birthday, and it's and he looks over the clock, and it's midnight, and he goes, and he's like, "Happy birthday, Harry!" He goes to blow out his own candles that are just again drawn in fucking <laughs> filth on the floor, <laughs> and then there's a knock at the door, not just a knock. No one wants to answer this damn thing, and it's not going to stop this person because who should come through the front door? Ruby is Hagrid. Boom! Knocks the fucking thing down, and and I love this character so much because he's a lovable adult. He's a complete idiot, but we love him anyway. He knocks down the door, realizes he's knocked it down, walks in, picks it back up, and just puts it back in place, <laughs> and looks over. Um, and of course, this is where the Dursleys. We, we start discovering that the Dursleys know exactly what's going on. He here. come out with a shotgun. Yeah, too. he comes out with a shotgun, and he goes, "Dry up, you old prune!" and bends the shotgun <laughs> up and shoots the fucking ceiling. And unfortunately, it didn't hit Dur- uh, Dudley. Um, why do you hate Dudley so much? He's a, for you good fucking hate, reasons. No, he's you should hate shit. the dad. I hate them all. Yeah, I hate Aunt Petunia suck. and Uncle Vernon. I hope he She's chokes on a worst. fucking chicken bone. Uh, of course, Hagrid uh, has a, a surprise for Carrie, or for Harry. Uh, he gives him a cake. It's Harry's 11th birthday. And now, of course, th- all you muggles out there might not know what that means because you're muggles. But 11 is the year that you're supposed to start at Hogwarts. It's your first year. Um Harry asks who he is, and he goes, I'm Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and crowns at Hogwarts. And Harry tells he's like, He's like, I don't know what any of this shit is. And he's like, have you not told this kid what he is? And the Dursleys are like, no. And at this point, you're like, Hagrid, kill him. No one's going to know. You're on a remote <laughs> island at this point. Right? You you bent, you bent a gun in half. You bent a gun in half. You can smash their heads <laughs> yeah. like like that girl smashed that dude's head in uh, what was that? The, the Amazon show that we just oh, watched. Oh, the boys. The boys, yeah. But he's not going to do that anyway because he's a, he's a lovable giant. He's a very sweet person. Uh, he get, Harry gives uh, Hagrid gives Harry the letter, uh, and it's his admission letter to Hogwarts. And he has the great line. He's like, you were a wizard, Harry. He tells him he's a wizard. Uh, and here he goes, mind. it clicked. That's why I can talk to snakes and all this cool shit. Everyone. Motherfucker. This Listen. explains everything. That's why I can make exactly. glass disappear and shit. Uh, of course, then it's revealed that Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon have known all about Hogwarts and they just don't want any of this shit to happen. Uh, and Harry gets pissed at him. He's like, wait, the fuck, you fucking knew about this shit? And he goes, uh, and they talk about his mother and how he was like, well, my mom died in a car accident. And then Hagrid laughs and he goes, a fucking car accident? That would have killed James and Lily Potter. Like, where are you out of your fucking mind? They're, they were awesome wizards. So dope. It mm-hmm. was awesome. Like, I, I love that line. It was like, a car accident? Like, no, they're not going down like that. They went down killing the fucking worst dark wizard ever. That's James and Lily Potter's son. That's James and Lily Potter's son. I'm getting emotional. Let's go on. Let's go on. <laughs> Bust out of blood. Exactly. Well, we're going to. Uh, well, and then also, and then Dursley fucking grabs the little cake. Yeah, he grabs the little and cake and starts to eat a it. Fat piece of shit. <laughs> and, he gets, he gets, and of course, Hagrid gives him a pigtail. Uh, and he's not supposed to, of course, because Hagrid's not supposed to do magic. I don't mm-hmm. think. And you're not really supposed to do magic outside of Hogwarts unless you're an actual established uh, magician, but or graduated. wizard. But unless we do find out that Hagrid very, very fast and loose with the rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he. he Really, I don't think he grabs. He's a little screwed. It's more. It's more I mean, like there, there's, ignorance. There's more about that that we'll talk about in later yeah. movies and why. Uh, of course, they bounce to London. Uh, Hagrid is now uh, taking Harry over to get some supplies. Uh, Harry's reading the list of gear that he needs, and he's like, I don't know where to get any of this shit. And Hagrid's like, I do. Let's take you to this incredibly creepy pub. Let's step back about 300 years. And they go in, and I love this fucking scene because they walk in, and one person realizes that he's Harry Potter, and then everyone starts freaking so out. They shut the well, fuck up. Hagrid does the, the typical Hagrid thing where he's That's like, Mr. me Potter. and Harry, yeah. or Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter. So, yeah. And it's just like, shut the fuck up, dude. That'd be cool. Yeah, but then he, we have a cool moment where everyone in the room Shuts the fuck up and is like, oh fuck! And like literally at one point, someone thanks him. Yeah, and you're like, what? The? He's like, what the <laughs> fuck did I do? <laughs> Who the hell? What the hell's going on? I just have a bowl cut. Um, <laughs> and of course, this is where we also meet Professor Quirrell. I think the defense yeah. against the dark arts teacher, who was like, Harry Potter, good to meet you, but I don't think he shakes his hand. In this. And immediately, yeah. you're like, something's up with this dude's head. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well, he's, uh, he's there's white... something sneaky yeah, going he's, on. <laughs> he's wearing that uh, suspicious turban, and you're like, well, I don't know, that doesn't fit the uh, the ensemble. But we'll move on. Uh, of course, they head out back. And he's like, we're still wondering what the hell's going on. He taps all the bricks, and we head to Diagon Alley, which, if you say it very fast, is just diagonally. Well, is, is that great. why? I don't know. Okay. Just funny. Mm. Cool. Don't no, ask questions. I, I thought in the books it had something to do with, like... The, no, no, no. It's just Diagon Alley. That's just the name of it. Like all the Barrett, can we get a read on. from the Master master Fan? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about... <laughs> no. Is that what we're calling? <laughs> the, the, master the Master Fan. fan. I'm with it. Uh, and I love this. I fucking love this because this is where we really step into the world of Harry Potter. All the students are there buying their like school supplies. And everyone's you get, in their outfits. Everyone's like in their robes. Everyone's robes. getting ready. And Harry's just like, it, there's just this unbelievable sense of wonderment that you start getting when they start stepping into this world. Um, 
we see bats and owls, and then of course uh, Harry's eye is drawn to this 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 specific item that's in the shop window. What is it? It's a broomstick, but not just any broomstick. It's the Nimbus it's the motherfucking two thousand. And that was, a, that was another get high moment for me. The moment I saw him, I'm like, oh, he's about to fuck people up with that thing. Oh, one yeah. day. Uh, and then we have the the moment where he like he's like. But uh, how am I supposed to pay for any of these things? And we get introduced to Gringotts. We got gold, motherfucker. Where Harry's family money is kept. Uh, of course, Gringotts is run by goblins. Uh, clever as they come, but not the most friendly of beasts. Um, and they walk in and he says, Mr. Harry Potter wishes to make withdrawal. Oh, and he gives him this letter from Dumbledore. And he's like, I have this letter from Mr. Dumbledore about vault you know what with item you know like about the thing in the vault you know all that's so very very trying to be as subtle as possible but couldn't stick out more than a, like a fucking sore thumb. Um uh, this is one of those moments for me where it's like you can't have it both ways, and I feel like no matter what, you're gonna I'm gonna complain. But it's like the practical little goblin dudes. Yeah, I'm like, this is rough. This does not look good. And if it was CG, I'd complain it was bad CG. So I was like, I don't know. Bad? Really? I thought it looked yeah, good. I, it was, I didn't think they looked good yeah, at all. I, liked, I was like, I these, these. I was like, damn, this is. It felt really amateur for really the rest of the world, like seeing those yeah. guys because the set looked great, and then you see well, these little. I like them, and I like the, I liked their practical, but I but they're freaky. Yeah, and that's what I it's love about it. It's the sharp it's the teeth. Hands. It's the sharp teeth. There's it's a lot these of are, freaky stuff about like, it. That's what I love about this series. It's a kid series, yeah. but it's but there's characters like this where you're like, that's fucking terrifying. Like if I had to go get my money out of the bank and those things were running it, I would be like, just keep it. I'll I'll, I'll put my I'll go to Citibank. I'll go back to the Citibank. Um, <laughs> of course, they go to Harry's vault and they open it up and it is just stacks of gold. And it's at this point, if I were a child who was abused most of my life, I'd be like, you know, instead of going to uh, uh, Hogwarts I'm town, gonna si- daddy assassin. wants to go to Ferrari town. Okay? <laughs> Ferrari Daddy's going to buy a Ferrari please and we're just going to tour daddy, Europe please. and fuck everyone. Like, I mean, fuck off everyone. Okay. He's 11 years old. Uh, he probably doesn't know how his PP works yet. But I'm just saying... God. He hasn't met the One horse. One second, it I'd took, look at that and be like, wait a minute, I'm minutes rich. For I'm <laughs> rich. <laughs> you look at the piles of gold, you go, I'm rich. Time to exact my revenge on that fucking piece of shit, Dudley Dursley. I decided I'm going to hire two assassins. I know normally we don't have future spoilers, but I, I do have a future spoiler question. Uh, does he keep the pigtail? Uh, so it's not addressed in the movie. But in the books, it's he has to get it surgically removed. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. In the in cool. the books, like he hangs out with a little uh, with them a little longer before going out with Hagrid, and they like have like an appointment to get it cut get it off, removed. and it's fucking hilarious. It's awesome. That's what he gets. Uh, then they go down to Vault uh, Seven One Three, where uh, Hagrid goes in and retrieves uh, something that looks like it's wrapped, a little small object that looks like it's wrapped. Um, package, uh, and then he goes turns to Harry and says, "Best not mention this to anyone, Harry, uh, because this is just a giant." Giant wad of cocaine. That's what this is. And and, and Dumbledore just fucking Cocaina. loves abusing, abusing the fucking Calabian cuckoo dust. <laughs> ah, let's move on. Why? Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, next up, move on. of course, we go to uh, Ollivanders, the makers of fine wands. Uh, that's Ollivanders. next. Uh, that's next up on the docket. Harry, of course, needs a wand if he's going to be a wizard. And we meet. We meet Ollivander, right? That is Ollivander, right? Ollivander. Runs the show. Ollivander. Ollivander? Yeah. Uh, I can't is... tell if you're trying to like, do no, the normal thing you do. Or... I thought it was pronounced Ollivander. No idea. I Renaissance, though, was my favorite thing. No, I hated it. I hated it so uh, much. Of course, played by John Hurt. Is that the actor's name? Yes. Who has been in a ton of stuff. Yeah. Mm. And he's awesome. Mm. He's <laughs> fucking awesome in this. Uh, and he picks out a wand for Harry. The first one he gives him, uh, it, it just goes nuts. It blows all the doors out. Papers fly everywhere. And he's like, well, that's not going to be the one. Uh, then he picks another one out, and Harry uses it. It does not go well either. Uh, it explodes. Then he picks one up and everything glows. It's like, Dude. okay, it's this one. So in Universal Studios, they have that set up where you can go get your wand, and it's the same thing where a couple of them fail, and then you get it, and it's supposed to be awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> but I love this. And did you get the implication of who they were talking about in this? Obviously, they kind of beat you over the head with it, but like. Voldemort? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's fascinating because he's like, "This is fascinating." The only other person who's had this, like the this, the phoenix that gave the tail feather for this wand, gave it to only one other wand, and the person that had that did great things, great, terrible things. But he says it in a way where you're like, "Do you no, respect he, him?" Yeah, for that? no, you seem like a Voldemort sympathizer. But like, that's what I like. Where Are you he's a like, leader, bro? But there's such an interesting vibe that goes along with this, where people appreciate like. The the difference between good and evil is like mm-hmm. both sides are kind of respected and appreciated because you're like, well, he does great things, but he just used them to do terrible things, but they were also really impressive. Well, Ollivander's also just like super weird, uh, specific, specifically when it comes to wand stuff mm-hmm. as well, so yeah. yeah. I mean, wand makers are super into wands, no surprise there. It's you true. Know? But I also love that the wand chooses the wizard, and that's another piece of fun yeah. Harry Potter magic. Like, th- this world is built up that way. You don't get to pick your wand, it picks you. And if, if you get picked by a dumbass wand, you are stuck with that thing forever. <laughs> dumbass there, uh, There's a rumor 
Like, I, I don't think this is future spoilers because it never comes in, but, like, there's, like, a theory that says that uh, the Phoenix they gave... Was it Dumbledore's? Yeah, it was yeah. Fox. That'd be really cool if it was Interesting. True. It's a future spoiler for later. No. <laughs> it isn't at all. That, that is totally a rumor. That no, no we, it, the fact that Dumbledore has so a Phoenix, they, we don't see in this film, but it doesn't fucking matter. Do the wands do different things, or are all the ones the same, and it just chooses you and just looks different? It's I, I think they actually have different... Like They have different, different like... Um, different, like... They're more flexible. Properties yeah, properties. Sure. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. And it makes it easier to do different things. Cool. Different things, yeah. yeah. Dope. But it yeah. picks you because it kind of can see what you're going mm -hmm. to be good at and says, hey, I'm good at that too. So mm -hmm. potions, chants, mm -hmm. enchantments, rather spells, things like that. Um, Hagrid, of course, then interrupts. And who does he bring him? That's right, baby. Hedwig. Yeah. 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 And uh, Kevin, really quick, the that rumor is definitely not a rumor. That's definitely something established. In the, really? Yeah. Hedwig's dope looking. Time. Yeah. All white owl? Hell yeah, man. White as the driven snow. Or the Calamian and cool <laughs> <laughs> This whole thing's just an announcement. Go go dust. Go go dust. Go go dust. Uh, later that night at dinner, Harry quizzes Hagrid about the the, the person who killed his parents. Uh, I don't and, know if I want to be Raven Claw anymore. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> they like to party. We're the ones that bring the drugs. Yeah, we'll keep some study all night. <laughs> We're gonna go. Uh, and he goes, you know what, Harry? Not all wizards are good. And then he starts telling him about Voldemort. And it was dark times. Voldemort had followers. Nobody. Nobody lived once. Like, if Voldemort wanted to kill you, you were basically was fucking dead. aced, man. Uh, except one person, you. Uh, that mark on your head is left over from a curse. Uh, and, and no one's sure what happened to Voldemort. And he's like, well, is he dead? He's like, we don't think so. We think he might still be out there. Uh, but honestly, he's like, this is why you're famous. Because when Voldemort wanted to kill someone, they're fucking dead. And there's only one person who ever lived. You. You're the boy who lived. The boy who lived. So cool. Fucking cool. Hagrid, of course, drops off Harry uh, at the at, at the train station, and he's like, "Just do it." Again, pretty Hagrid, kind of an idiot. It's like just head to platform nine and three quarters. And Harry's like, "Wait, there, I don't. There's no nine and three quarters." Hagrid's gone. Terrifying. Just dark. It's like your first day of yeah. school, just and like college. It's like your first day of college. You're like, I don't. What yeah. building is this? I you don't always know go, to go to the wrong building. Yeah. Like, oh my god. This yeah. Uh, of course, Harry walks around Scary. and he asks an attendant, and he's like, uh, is, is, "Can I? Is there platform nine and three quarters?" And the guy's like, "Are you having a laugh?" <laughs> Are you taking a piss? <laughs> Are you snowing that fuck off, Charlie Bean? That guy went from zero to like a hundred weights. Yeah, he went hard on him. On this little kid that seems lost and confused. And then, of course, Instead he, of being like, oh, let me look at your ticket. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> Exactly. Like that poor kid could have just been like nine. He just wanted nine. And he's yeah. like, oh, are your parents here? Where are your parents? Are they died? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sympathize. I, I got something for you here. Uh, platform nine and three quarters, the entrance to the part of King's Cross Station where students could catch the Hogwarts Express was filmed on platforms four and five. Rowling admitted that she accidentally mixed up the layout of King's Cross. She had meant for platform nine and three quarters to be in the inner city part of the station. But platforms nine and ten are actually on the less grand suburban platform. Interesting. Man. I think if I'm not Don't mistaken, there's a, actually a plaque there, Yeah, there's right? a plaque And now there. I put yeah. it there for pictures and shit. That's cool. It's pretty rad. Uh, of course, uh, Harry looks around and he sees another family that looks like they are probably going the same place. I, in the movie, it's so like, come on, there's a bunch of muggles here. Uh, and then she's like, let's go find nine and three quarters. And it's like, all right, well, that's real convenient. Thank God, because yeah. Harry's lost. And of course, uh, <laughs> we're a bunch of wizards here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I and I love this, of course, because who is it? And it's Mrs. Weasley. Right. And uh, we see Ron and we see Percy and we see Fred and George and we see Ginny yeah. for a second. But she's not quite old enough to go to school. So if you notice, she has to hang back because she doesn't start, I think, until the next year. Right. Yeah. Correct. yeah. You think she's going to normal school? No, I think she just sits in a room by herself. And just goes fuck man FOMO. I think just for like wizards, we fuck man. <laughs> we put Joey in the back room. She hates it. She has no speaking she puts skills. There. We've never put her there. <laughs> uh, of course, Mrs. Weasley takes to Harry immediately, and I don't think she, I don't think she knows who he is. No, at no this one point, knows right? at this point. Nobody she's knows, just but awesome. she just sees this, a boy. And yeah, she's Mrs. Just, Weasley, just a great mom, just fucking ready awesome. to help out a little kid in need. You know, she has nine hundred kids. Maybe just you know, maybe <laughs> maybe the wizarding world needs birth control. <laughs> you know, like a, no, there's like very few of them. They need to have a lot of kids. Yeah, they just gotta yeah. keep procreating. Yeah, I mean, there's, keeps, there's very think about it. In all of Europe, there's what two, three schools. And also, she's also had very competent children, with the exception of Ron, because the other two, the old, the eldest two, like one wrangles dragons. Ron's competent, Ed. He's Ron's like, a fucking he, moron. He, I don't think he ever. <laughs> Ron, Ron couldn't fucking wizard his way out of a paper bag. No, who's getting strangled so by it? Mean. Thank God he winds up with who he winds up with. No future spoilers, but no, man, it's no, not. that's totally he's just, fucking it's taking not. care of his ass. Okay, the of his life. <laughs> idiot is like, so can't get, get out of the fucking bathroom. You guys share those sweetest tradition. What's up? What's up, man? Yeah, bring them over here, Chloe. Kevin's eyes just light <laughs> up. <laughs> like of course, she says, uh, Mrs. Game. Weasley says, hey, platform nine and three quarters is, is that isn't that pillar. Just run at it. No, uh, and, the, and Fred and George run first, and, and it works out. Well, of course, Fred and George, uh, proving that they're kind of pricks, 
play a joke on their mom. She's like, I love Fred, it. he's George. So funny. You can't even recognize your own kids. She's like, fuck, man. Like, I have 19 of you. I don't care anymore. <laughs> okay, mama that. just needs to go back and have some of mama's courage juice. What is that? That's some butter beer. That's right. Mrs. Weasley drinking that butter beer when no one's looking. Nobody, that's not. Harry no. runs toward it. And she's like, best to give it a bit of a run, you know, just to get the, to get the nerves out. Yeah, nervous. Nervous. He gives it a run, of course, enters the real world of, of, or, of the real world, the world, real train is where we find the Hogwarts Express. Uh, and it just fucking is cool, man. So I want to cool. go on this train yeah. so fucking bad. But don't do it that or someone's going to come up and just run in behind you. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're standing there, you're going to you're gonna shop a car up your <laughs> <Yeah>. ass. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Broken tailbone day one has to stay home. Oh, Sucks. man, that's the worst. And then you got to hang out with Ginny. And you're like, wow, you're a fucking loser, too. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, what is your <laughs> deal? <laughs> just joking. Ginny's awesome. <laughs> Ginny ends up being confident. Let, like that. Keep, Total fuck that run. All right. All right. All right. Uh, the train has taken off, and we are we are on our way to Hogwarts. And I love choo these. Choo. I love these scenes. We just I love how bright and colorful this movie is too. Mm. Keep that in mind too as we keep going, because <laughs> this is like the last movie that's colorful. Everything else just starts. I wouldn't dark call it colorful past. at all. Really, I think it's super There's a lot saturated. Of reds. The greens are saturated. <laughs> Madame Hooch's eyes are really stand out. We'll get to that later. It's really weird. Stand Isn't out. it weird that like we associate this so much as a Christmas series? I, it, right. I think that's. And then we also do with Home Alone. Is it just the score? Does the score just sound no, like they Christmas? Both have, like, well, home alone takes alone place scenes. during Christmas. Yeah, but this, this yeah. takes as a large scene during Christmas. I yeah. always think about this as a Halloween movie. I always what? think Christmas because they have the it's troll, the Halloween, also, the floating pumpkins. Also, I think pumpkins. it came out. When did it come out? It probably came out. Two thousand one, November. November, yeah. close yeah. enough yeah. to Christmas. Kevin, right your right drink's time. running out. Do you want to refill it in your Slytherin cup over there? I don't have a Slytherin cup. Look, yeah, I like how you're wearing all you're wearing the wrong colors today. All I'm red. not. All right, so I don't understand. I don't get it. He took his Pottermore test, and oh, it's fine. I want you to retest. I that just flash. showed you. No, I'm not gonna yeah, retest. Bullshit. I know you Photoshop that. I See, did Andy, Photoshop. I trust Andy would Photoshop this is the it. Website. They don't have an app, which is upsetting. What, what does know, it say? It, it says Gryffindor. Thank you. It really does. But I mean, where? How did you get that? Did you retest? Uh, no. That's from how long ago? <laughs> So you just logged know. in and it said Gryffindor? You took that test 15 years ago? You're a goddamn fucking Slytherin thing to do, I didn't take the test, a a thing I didn't take the test when I was 11 like I'm my kids saying. will. That's fair. As well they should. Yeah. Uh, moving on, of course. Uh, Harry is in a train car by himself, in a compartment by himself, and who should wander in? The lovable Dolt Ron. And he's like, oh, hey, Governor, there's no other seats. Can I hang out with you? And Harry's like, sure, you can hang out with me. These are some proper ass little kids, man. Everything they say, I'm like, man, you're so fancy. Isn't yeah. it lovely? Them British kids, man. Isn't it lovely? Teach them right, you know? Uh, and of course, Ron quickly figures out who he's sitting with and freaks the fuck out. And he's like, holy shit, you're Harry Potter, aren't you? And Harry's like, I am Harry Potter. Bloody and he's hell, like, mate. He's like, G can I see the scar? In and it? Harry's like, sure. And he's like, oh, it's cool. It's such a cool oh, little kid moment it. of like, oh, it's a tree. And, the and then Harry looks at Ron, and Ron looks at Harry, and they go, we just become best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and it is fucking great because they're best friends forever. And what I love it. What the fuck was he going to eat? Like, what was in there? It was like a sandwich. sandwich. It, it was, was a sandwich that was destroyed, but it looked like it was just filled with pat yeah. pate. It was like just this. wrapped yeah. up in saran wrap. It was wrap. tuna. Maybe it was tuna. Yeah. But I love this because this should have, it could have come off like Harry was being like, and he, like, oh, I could fucking take Harry, but it didn't. He was just literally like, oh, this kid's got a piece of shit sandwich <laughs> that he's clearly not excited about. Yeah. And the, the chocolate cart just came. And what does Harry do? He's like, we'll take the lot. Give it all, give them all of us. Sucks so for it. the kids in the like Fuck compartments them. further. Fuck them. Do you they think they had another car? No, they can rematerialize. It's magic. They yeah, just go like they this. Just fucking candy, just candy caponis or whatever the fuck. But he bought it all. Candy caponis. <laughs> candy caponis. <laughs> the old candy caponis spell. <laughs> just refills the jelly yeah, bean man. jar. Uh, of course, we get introduced to uh, the chocolate frog, which has a card with Dumbledore in it. And I love it because he looks at it. He's like, who's Dumbledore? He's like, oh, he's one of the greatest wizards of all time. But I have like three of those cards. And then Harry looks back. And he's like, he's gone. And Ron's like, well, you can't expect him to run around all day. That's funny. Like He's got shit to do. <laughs> you're like, oh, OK. Like, that's cool. And then, of course, they, they introduce Birdie's uh, every flavored uh, be Birdie Bots, every flavored beans. Uh, and by the way, they used to sell these things. They and still I, do. I did get oh, a vomit yeah. one one time. And it did was you horrible. really? Oh, yeah. They have oh. bad ones in there. Yeah, yeah. they have really bad ones. Earwax and vomit. And they taste this. like fucking vomit. It's gross. Yeah. They went hard, just like Harry Potter does. Yeah. You can oh, actually get them man. at Stonestown. Can you? We right. should get some after this. Well, let's do it. I'm in. Chloe, get us some birdie beer bots. Don't, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Just give, just give Kevin another Swedish fish. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, Ron introduces him to Scabbards, uh, who is his uh, piece of shit little rat. <laughs> and, we, and we hate this fucker for a lot of reasons. It doesn't matter. God, such a piece uh, Ron of goes, shit. hey, my, my brother taught me how to like do a spell on him uh, to turn him yellow. Do you want to see it? And Harry's like, yeah, dude, I want to see everything. Like We're best friends now. I support you even though you can't do fucking magic to save your life. <laughs> you're such a little piece of shit, Ron. And I'm going to be fucking backpacking you the rest of my you're life. You're going to flunk out of this school on. in two years. Yeah, if it wasn't for me and Hermione, you you would have been fucking no one. Just remember that, you piece of shit. Uh, it's so weird how all the little kids are doing spells 
<laughs> and like they're all like Bless weird you. rhymes and shit. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. are you are you fucking dumb? Have you not, never heard anyone do a spell? Yeah. None of them are dumbass rhymes. But that's why I love it because the next character we see, of course, is Hermione, who's like, who walks in and she's like, hey, have you guys seen a toad? A boy named Neville has lost one. And then she looks over and like, oh, you doing magic? Let's see it then. So cool. Just I knowing love, fully love well kid, yeah. that whatever this kid's doing, it's she, not he doesn't work, have yeah. the stuff. <laughs> okay. Her hair is so impossibly big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, and I mean this in the so most. So many secrets. I, 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 I think she, she, this character's awesome. She nailed mm-hmm. this. She nailed this. Nailed it. She sees it. He her, does it. He, the, 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 this thing goes bad. It pops, the, it almost kills the rat or whatever. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> she goes, you guys, she's, he's like, well, let's see you do some magic then. She's like, well, I only know simple stuff, you know, actual useful stuff. And she fixes Harry's glasses. Um, and then as she's leaving, just to fuck with Ron one more time, she's like, you know, you got a little dirt on your nose. Just there. Weird that, like, that was a scene. Yeah, like, I didn't why get did that. he? How did he get dirt on his face? Because he's a grubby why little bastard. Is she being like <laughs> he's a grubby little I, I don't bastard. think that what she did was like douchey. Like, oh, you have you have dirt in your face. No. Weird. The Harry didn't say shit. It was just. I just wish it was there the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> but it's. Yeah. I, I, and I. But I like it because it's indicative of her being a little bit like not like she doesn't really know how to act either. Like all these kids are just figuring out because they're kids. Yeah. They're eleven. They don't really. They're not socialized. They haven't really been around all this stuff for a long time. And Hermione, of course, is an outlier in this, uh, as is Harry, which is what forms their friendship. Ah. Uh, uh, let's see. Before we move on, yeah, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, you can get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy, just like Gia does all the time. Because guess what, Andy? Guess what I'm going to have this week? Oh, tell me. A melted Monterey Jack burger. Wow. In your house, not some fancy restaurant? Oh, yeah. No, no. It's so easy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. It's true. Toasted buns? Uh... If, yeah, you it's on you. That's on you, yeah, man. You got to. It's on you. Uh, there's something for everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Uh, you can add extra meals to your weekly order as well as yummy sides like garlic bread and cookie dough. I like that, Kev. I love cookie dough. <laughs> Easily kidding. change your delivery days, <laughs> food preferences, and skip a week. Whatever you need uh, for $80 off of your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Morning80 and enter Morning80. That is $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to H-E-L-L-O-F-R-E-S-H dot com slash Morning80 and enter code Morning80. How about that? It's like receiving eight meals free. Or you get twenty dollars off your first four boxes. However you want to say it, you know what I mean. That's how math works. Mm-hmm. It's great. HelloFresh.com slash morning eighty code morning eighty. Was it? What's that? Was that it? Oh yeah. Was oh it. wow. Okay. That was it. So here we are. Support our advertisers. Oh. Yeah. Dude. So they know that we're worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, tweet at Gia and have her make me food. You know, <laughs> just ask her to make me some food. <laughs> I want to eat these burgers so bad. <laughs> so bad. Thanks for the plot. Yeah. Woo. Also, by the way, next time we do plot, it has to be plot, 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 plot. Greg sucks. <laughs> That's He's it. right. That's he, what it has to be. Okay. Plot, 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 plot. <laughs> Greg sucks. <laughs> He's listening back there. I just wanted him to know. Oh, okay. He sucks so bad. Greg. Nuts? Oh yeah. He well, he listens to everything we do. He's just, crazy. But I think it's honestly just because That's every every one out and then we talk about him. And he likes to be included in the loop. Yeah. He likes to be in the loop. Uh, of course, the train. Comes and docks at uh, his train dock. Pulls in to uh, Hajmead Station. Uh, we're not, we don't see a is lot it of. Is called docking when a train pulls in? Nah, no, it pulls in. Right? <laughs> pulls in right? yeah. I don't get docks. I was off on that one. Uh, and who's there to meet them? Of course, Hagrid's there. Uh, and he's like, everyone, get in the boats. First because years. We have first years. Get in the boats. And I love that they're like. By the way, everyone else just gets the fucking like. Go over the on the carriages, the, the carriages, that, uh, but the first years have to get the boat because we want you to know how scary and awesome Hogwarts mm-hmm. Castle is. And the best way to do that is to have you traverse the Great Lake, which, by the way, is another terror. This castle is surrounded by terrifying things. All to protect the Great Lake forest. and the Dark Forest. <laughs> the Dark Forest are fucking terrifying, and they're like everyone's forbidden to go in there because they'll kill you. Yeah, if there's we giant. Can, we could take you over you. there like on a magic carpet or something, but we'd or rather you. Get, or if you get detention, you know, what <laughs> I mean? rather you yeah. raft. <laughs> um, of course, this is where we also get introduced to Neville Longbottom, uh, who is a character that pops up a bunch of times in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. I love, I love the little touch also that no one's rowing the boats; the boats are just rowing themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're man, going across, and we see Hogwarts Castle for the first time, and it is. 
majestic. Uh, the children enter Hogwarts and they're greeted by Professor McGonagall, who tells them that they're about to be sorted into all of four houses. And those four houses are Gryffindor. Well, I don't have a thing for Gryffindor. We'll just do this. Gryffindor. Uh, Ravenclaw. <laughs> Uh, Hufflepuff, oh. and then of okay. course, <laughs> and then of course Slytherin. <laughs> there it is. Uh, and this is of course also where we meet that other lovable piece of shit that just God, I hate this horrible so human much. being, Draco Malfoy, who uh, oh, yeah. who I forgot actually tries to make buddy buddy with Harry Potter yeah. and recruit him as one of his In cronies. The most dickish way. Yeah, he's like basically. Uh, I don't even know. I don't need to know who the fuck you are. I can tell by your dumb shit. Uh, red hair and your hand-me-down robes. You must be a Weasley, you piece like, of shit. Damn, dude. Yeah. This kid is great at insulting Fierce. people. He fucking nailed it. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Offers his hand to Harry and he was like, you don't want to, he's like, why don't you come hang out with me? You don't want to fall in with the wrong sorts. And Harry, proving once again that he he has the metal, is like, I think I know the wrong sorts when I see him. Because yeah. he looks he over like at Draco, this <laughs> snake-looking motherfucker. Yeah. And he looks at his shitty-ass friends and yeah. you're like, you know those are some punk-ass yeah. kids, those dude. Those are the kids that are like legitimately going to be like, die of drug abuse. Yeah. Like, what are, their, what are their names? Toad? Crab and Goyle. Crab yeah. and Goyle. Great. Yeah. Even worse. They're, they're, they're fucking uh, a they're joke. Sorry. They're s- bulk and scully. Dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Legit, one of them did get arrested in real life for yeah. having drugs or exactly. something. Exactly. Good casting. <laughs> Uh, Again, like I, you know, these these kid actors, you can't hate on them too much. But I, I just don't. I've never liked the direction of Draco. He's just too Disney Channel cartoony for me. He gets a little. That's wonky the kind more. of person he is, though. Yeah, I just say uh, <laughs> Potter. Like it's just like it's so like like, but, like you can. It's tell. such a caricature. It's that like when when he goes I for detention that. and he's like, "We're doing servants' work." It's like, oh, <laughs> you piece of. He's shit. He's a little entitled piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, we move forward, of course, into what the Great Hall. That's right. And Dope. this, I fucking love this place, man. So I want to cool. eat there so bad, especially when the feast comes up. I and like, I was like, this wedding was it was nice, you know. It was themed that. after that, and they it nailed it. Floating candles, like, yeah. Uh, and this is where we meet Albus Dumbledore, who has a couple announcements before the sorting ceremony begins. <laughs> uh, the first announcement, of course, is Dumbledore tells the first years of the Dark Forest is off limits to everyone. No one can go in the Dark Forest. Also, the third floor corridor on the right side is out of bounds to anyone who does not Just wish to die you. a most painful death. All right, let's move on. And everyone except for Harry's like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And Harry's <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, okay, cool. Uh, sorting hat time, baby. Who's up first? Hermione. That's right. She gets Gryffindor. Natch. She's Gryffindor through and through. Unlike Kevin. Uh, Draco Malfoy gets up first. And I love this touch because the sorting hat doesn't even so get good. close to no. him. No. Slytherin. Slytherin. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. And everyone cheers because they know they want, they want the Malfoys to be a Slytherin, of course. Um, Ron gets up. Uh, or actually, I think Harry looks over and, and over at Snape. Of course, every time Snape's there, Quarrel's also there, and his scar hurts, and he's like, oh, what the fuck's going on there? And Snape's just a dick. Snape's like, oh, I'm going to... Snape Alan looks Rick- like he's horny. Played, of course, by Alan Rickman. No. I'm going to need you horny? to dive a little yeah, deeper what, into this, uh, I'm just saying, like... Snape looks like, like, like he wants to kill him. It looks like they're, when they're in a room together, and he sees Harry, he's like... Ooh. No, like he does, he does this weird no. thing. I don't like it. You, I fucking you're, hate you're it. You're misreading that. No, man. You think he's thirsty? I'm, no, no. Guys, I know he's not thirsty. I've seen the movies, but it's just the reaction of like. He's gonna Kevin Spacey. He is, he is very <laughs> like. Very like <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. I hate on from it. That. I hate it. Uh, Ron gets up and gets Gryffindor, and everyone's like, "Oh, great! Yay, we got Ron yeah. and Gryffindor. We got Ron. What is just a dead weight that we're gonna have to <laughs> <laughs> run around with us? <laughs> with I'm joking shit. around. I'm joking around. Uh, and then <laughs> it's gonna be our <laughs> Ron's gonna be the hot guy of this series. Yeah. He's fucking yeah. moron. Yeah. <laughs> Ron does uh, suck. We'll, we'll get more into that later. He's good comic relief. He's a good. He's a good no, all around pal. He's, he's fodder for every other. He's dark such part. a like. Uh, he's cool. Of course, we've no, uh, we've we've talked about Slytherin a little bit here. He's like, what the hell, is Slytherin? And like Slytherin is just like I think someone set it up where like one of the kids is like, oh, it was there's Olivander. never was it Olivander? Yeah, he's like never a good wizard's never come. Out. Some kids. No, Ron, some Ron says it too. Ron says it. My bad, my no bad. one good's ever come out of Slytherin. They're basically where all the dark wizards come from. They're a piece of shits and like they're thugs and criminals and all that stuff. So Harry, of course, naturally, he's like, I don't want. You think they would just shut down that whole house? You think so? <laughs> like, from all you know from this movie, doesn't seem advisable to keep this institution in place. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that's why it's in, that's why the wizard they're they're it's great. Area. All, it's such a small percentage. Great. Well, it's such I don't a think, small percentage they go bad. I don't think Slytherin, like the actual person the house is named after, I don't think he was bad necessarily. Yeah, he was. He was terrible. Yeah. Was he terrible? Yeah, yes. he was real terrible. Super racist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wizard <laughs> racist. So it's oh, more, okay, you know, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, but, the wizarding world is, uh, you know, they're full of uh, left and right. How do you uh, feel, though, as, as Slytherin? Like as fellow Slytherin to be in the crowd, not fellow, I guess, but to be watching Harry go, not Slytherin, please not Slytherin. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel as them to be like, well, fuck you, dude, we don't want you with us either. He's like, oh, it sucked if he got picked. Yeah. But I love that because the hat, the hat's like interesting. 
Like, uh, are you I, sure you don't want Slytherin? Because you could do great things in Slytherin. They could help you do great things. I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's cool. Mm-hmm. I I get the feeling that no one can hear this interaction. <laughs> I assume but as much. It, it seems in the like book, they're 25 feet away. <laughs> yeah. And also in the book, he's doing it in his head, and yeah. the hat can, like, hear Talk his thoughts him, yeah. and shit. Yeah. That would have been better. Yeah. Harder to see, but yeah, I feel like it would have been confusing and people are like, like, not Slytherin. I was like, oh, not Slytherin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Slytherin? <laughs> he doesn't like you. Feel, feel, feel free to pull a fucking full metal jacket on this kid. He's <laughs> out beat the shit out of him with soap bars oh, and a sock. Oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> it's the Wicked Witch of the West! It's me, Professor McGonagall, as you know! I am famous in this movie! <laughs> She's transfigured herself I'm into I am famous in this movie for giving out points to each and every house based on their performance! And that's why here in Harry Potter in review, I will give out points based on the performance of each of you! You, my precious wizards that I love so much. <laughs> I will transfigure myself into your house later, Andy. Now, who will get the points today based on their performance? I am Professor McGonagall. <laughs> the answer <laughs> is, of course, 15 points to Ravenclaw! Yeah. And he gets these points based on the fact that he won't let Kevin Dursley forget that he is in flax Slytherin! Yeah. You are a yeah. Slytherin boy! Or you are a muggle! It is your choice! You Slytherin yeah. piece of shit! Yeah. We hope you get hit by a bus! <laughs> Goodbye! Children. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor <laughs> McGonagall. What is wrong with that man? Dynamite dropping. It's crazy. God, what is wrong with him? Man, I, God, what is wrong I, with man, I really like, what we saw. I really wanted to photograph Porty looking up, terrified at his father. <laughs> 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 what's, so what's, confused. Dude, he came over and yelled. <laughs> he just full stood right into your Porty ear. just stood there and was like, <laughs> "What is happening right now?" What's amazing is I, as I was reading the plot and fully immersed in my own amazing preparation for you this show, uh, I looked over and I saw Porty. And then I looked away, and then I looked over, and I saw Greg. And I was like, did he just trans- <laughs> transfigure him from 40? Wait, like, that, he'd be 40 That is another question I had. Yeah. Uh, is Professor McGonagall going to transfigure into your house? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, she's she's not. I forgot to lay out the rules. This is a reoccurring bit. Everyone keep the points added up. There'll Darn. be a winner at the end of the term, won't there, Dursley? Uh, yeah. You Slytherin bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I, I think... I, I think what Greg doesn't oh well, Professor McGonagall doesn't know. Look again, like, there's Porty. I just see Porty walking away. Yeah. Professor McGonagall's <laughs> giving out points already, but we're like a third of the way through the movie. Yeah, we're not even. <laughs> That's fine. I think Greg had other shit to move on <laughs> to. Yeah, he's got a call or something. Uh, I'll, I'll try to speed this up, guys. Sorry. Uh, of course, the feast begins, and Harry asks about Snake. No, okay. Here we go. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. I was also going to ask what your children want for lunch, because this is running very long. Uh, we should order lunch, probably. Yeah, I'm done. Pizza? <laughs> 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 let's see, let's see, how about pizza and meatballs? Can we do the meatballs? Like, uh, Can we get some wings, too? Can we get some wings? We can, Dursley! <laughs> you Slytherin coward! <laughs> I hate him. I hate There's him. Sorry. The thing is, he's mixing so many different things in here. I just don't understand why they, have, have, to, they have to defend me <laughs> so much. He's fucking spot on. Like, you can call he's me one of the worst on. characters, Ben, and not his fault. <laughs> Holy shit. In a uh, shitty house it. that I don't like. Right. I love it. Uh, moving right along, uh, we get introduced to Snake, who is the professor of potions. Uh, but he, but, but Coral is the and then Coral next to him. You've already met. Who is the dark art? The defense against the dark arts teacher. But it's well known that Snape has wanted that job forever, and so. Snake relegated to potions. Uh, will he ever get it? You'll have to keep watching to find out. Uh, and then we get introduced to Nearly Headless Nick and some of the other ghosts, played by John Cleese. Uh, Horrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, why they got him nearly I, it's terrifying. Like, holy crap. Love it. That's Hermione being a dick. Some sixth sense right shit right there, nearly, dude. Yeah. Uh, next up, of course, uh, they ask the house prefects to take their uh, the first years to their dormitories. Percy, of course, uh, Ron's brother, is the house prefect for this year. Interesting they didn't make a big deal of it. Like, that was his brother. They talk about it in the book a lot. I think yeah, that's, no, one of those, yeah, that's, that's one of those things yeah. that they don't talk about. Well, she's super 
mom super proud. And yeah. The, like, because every, again, everyone in the Weasley household very competent uh, except for that fuckwit Ron. And that's that's why Ron gets the rat. <laughs> Dumbass because because he, that was his gift. Like they they got him an owl. Oh, right? that's right. Yeah. Uh they walk into the stair the the room with all the staircases Morty. and he's like watch out for the staircases. They have a tendency to change on you. Bart Bart I'm scared. Like that's a dangerous place I'm just, for him to be. I'm just scared that's a little highly He's going to turn into yeah. one of those skeletons, you know, like <laughs> he's just stuck there. Yeah. He got sorry, sorry, sorry about that. That's, no, right. that's a good call. Speaking uh, of that room, uh, yeah. the last little fact that I have is only one of the moving staircases in Hog Hogwarts was functional and the rest of them were digitally created, but one of them was real. No, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's the one we see later, I'm sure. Also, these staircases wildly dangerous because they like come to land on certain mm -hmm. spots that are open. Yeah. But when they're not there, it's just no, an just open spot. Yeah. Again, mm. Hogwarts, they don't fuck around. They don't care if kids die. It's evolution, man. Yeah. Like it's it really is. It's survival of the fittest. If you're dumb enough to fall off a staircase, you don't belong there. Mm -hmm. It's one of four universities. So Go Hogwarts back to apparently didn't used to have any plumbing. Oh, I heard about. No, yeah, we don't talk this. about that. We don't talk. Yeah. About apparently, this. all these kids nope. used to shit their pants, and just magic it away. Yeah. That's awesome. Why no, J.K. Not. Rowling decided to add this fun little fact? <laughs> Nobody knows. She She's bored. She's yeah. just bored. Yeah, she's bored. <laughs> Wait, was this a retroactive thing? Like, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It was like that's six what Pottermore ago. is. Is basically for her to like add weird facts, every facts which is really yeah. cool yeah. sometimes. Mm. And Most of the time, shit all, uh, it's like, hey, J.K. Randomly. I get that you want to yeah. still yeah. dip your toe in this world. How about write another fucking book? Yeah, write another goddamn book. Also, the horse, the horse centaur in the forest. We used to fuck all the time. That's weird. <laughs> we used also, to fuck. you would think his dick was huge. No, medium size. Uh, okay. Medium size. <laughs> he has a normal guy dick. Oh, no, that's right. you didn't get the dick. horse part there. It's crazy. Kind of, he's kind of sad about it because everyone else has fucking giant hogs. Jesus okay, <laughs> we get up to the uh, of course the painting uh, that asks for the password, and of course you need a password to enter the Gryffindor common room. I cannot remember what the password was, and I did not write it down. Pear, do you remember? It Fuck no, it was something really complicated. Yeah, okay. Weird. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we see it. This is the common room. Girls are up to the right. Boys are up to the left. What could possibly go wrong with this setup? Where they're meeting by the fireplace and banging it out, maybe a little bit? In the happens? book, uh, the uh, boy students are not allowed to go up to the, uh, like, girls, like, dormitory. <laughs> they get, like, bounced back and shit. No, yeah, but can they it bang it in the common slide? room? Oh, that's what it does. And they, like, slip down? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are people who are banging at 11. Maybe a hand. No, no, but this is where but all no, the kids they, are. Yeah, they're all there. Oh, so shit. the 11-year-olds yeah. and the 17-year-olds so share yeah. a room. Danger. And yeah. the 17-year-olds are just down there. But, I mean. Exploring. That's all Jesus I'll say. Jesus Christ. She has said that about the Hufflepuffs, yep. though. Uh, and this is where we get a yeah. great, this is where we get that great moment that I was talking about, right? So everything is settled. It's late. And Harry is just sitting in the windowsill staring out at the Great Lake mm -hmm. and just taking in the fact that his life has changed dramatically. For the better, you would yeah. assume. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great. I love these moments. I love that the, the director gave. We're like, you know, it's a long movie, but we're going to take a couple seconds mm -hmm. to like just catch up with where Reflect. Harry is mentally. And it's beautiful. Uh, the next day, of course, Ron and Harry couldn't, they're late to Professor McGonagall's transfiguration class. And they're like, oh, good. She's not here, not realizing what a fucking transfiguration class is. And she's, of course, there. She's the cat that's sitting there. And she just gives him the what for. <laughs> I love Ron's response to be like, that was wicked. Yeah. She's like, yeah, thanks for your assessment. Yeah, she's Just like, I know, down. I'm a bad motherfucker, and am I future? Like, am I gonna excel at Hogwarts? Maybe later. Yeah, maybe I will. Who cares? Oh, well, no future spoilers. Next up, potions class. Snape, Alan Rickman's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so good. good. He's so awesome, but also such a fucking dick. Yeah, but that's like, why he's quit perfect. Being a dick. And R.I.P. Alan, like, Alan Rickman. Looks like fame won't get you Yeah, and I love like, that. And Harry Potter. Meanwhile, meanwhile I was like, like yeah. I just got here, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know anything. I literally two weeks ago, I had no idea you guys existed. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. He finishes out the series. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think yeah. he. I think he died shortly after the the eighth movie was made. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, little, right? I think it was a little while after. No, right? it was a little while afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. It doesn't matter. He was. Uh, he Very died good. in 2016. Okay, yeah, yeah so yeah. it was it was way after then. Uh, and so begins the Snape Potter relationship. Snape immediately starts getting her shit. Of course, Harry's just taking notes on what Snape's saying, but Snape doesn't give a fuck because he's like, everyone else is paying attention. Yeah, and it was you weird. shouldn't be you don't need to be taking notes here at this point. I'm not actually giving you information, you dumb shit kid. And then quizzes him a bunch. And what I love about the scene is that Harry's like, I have no idea what's going on. Hermione. But Hermione is just right next Ripping to her like trying off. to get her head higher because she knows the answer to this. Not of course, <laughs> again, not realizing the point is that he's trying to make Harry into the fool, not that he's actually asking the question. But her money is like any chance I get to excel, I'm taking it, and I love that little bit of character development. Mm -hmm. um, next up, it's mail time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they're at the Great Hall, and Owl start dropping packages all over the place. Um, and, uh, uh, Neville gets, of course, the remember. And of course, the problem with the remember is that it, it'll remind you that you've forgotten something because, like, I can never remember what I forgot. Because Neville's adorable and stupid, and he belongs in the same on the same bus as fucking Ron because they're both okay. just right. idiots. Calm down. Uh, 
Harry reads an article in the Daily Prophet about uh, Vault 713 being broken into, but nothing was stolen uh, as the vault had been emptied earlier that day. Of course, Harry knows that for a fact because Harry, Harry was there that day and saw it being emptied. He's like, oh, that's crazy. Next up, flying class with Madam Hooch. 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 With what? crazy what are you eyes. Who's got some crazy eyes? Who's got some crazy eyes? Yeah. It's weird really how much she's in this movie, eye. and then I don't remember her being in any other movies. She's, I think she's like in it for like half a second, the other one. Maybe one other movie. Right. Uh, Maybe two. Go ahead. No, go for it. No, no, no that was it. I was just okay. thinking to myself. Uh, Huge. The idea, of course, is that Harry and uh, we're flying classes. She says, walk over to your broom, put your hand over it and say, up. And Harry says up and it immediately snatches to his hand. So uh, Hermione, of course, this is the one thing she gets frustrated with because she can't make this work. Uh, Ron gets it on the second or third try. And you're like, oh, okay. They've got, these guys have some different like, limited cool. abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Neville gets on his broom and can't control it. And he goes freaking nuts. Uh, gets gets speared on the top of a statue and then falls down. She and also acts like mad at him like he's doing it. And it's like, yeah. this kid is freaking the <laughs> fuck out. She's Obviously. like, get down here she now. She also and died, like, like, prepares to like take him down and then last minute dives out it's like why didn't you just, just knock help him, him down right. he fucking fell like you done something. 30 feet yeah no attempt to slow his fall down either only broke her wrist it's fine yeah but damn it was broken yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh he fucking snapped that thing of course Madam Hooch takes him over she's like well we gotta go to the hospital everyone else I guess just sit, with these, sit with these amazing riding machines and don't get on top of them and of course what does Malfoy immediately do grabs a remember all gets on top and he's like stupid kid uh, uh, Neville forgot to must have forgotten how to fly or whatever the fuck he just gives a shitty little line Harry's like, give that back. And Malfoy's like, make me. And does this like, he flies away as he's like half riding the broom and it just kind of skips oh, across the road. so cool. I'm like, damn, dude, you got some lessons yeah. ahead of you. Uh, you. You got a little lessons in your background there. Um, Harry jumps on and is like, fuck you, dude. I'm coming after you. And despite not knowing how to fly, just takes to it like a fish in water mm -hmm. and starts chasing after him. Malfoy freaks out and is like, I don't, okay, fuck it. How Throws the remember. <laughs> And here he goes, just speeds toward the window uh, that leads to M Professor McGonagall's office, uh, grabs it right at the last minute, does a little cool juke move, like flips around, and, and then comes back down to all the kids, applauding him. He lands, of course, and who's there? Professor McGonagall's like, come with me. And you think he's in hot water. Yeah. And of course, important to note here, mm -hmm. and this is something that that is, a, again, a morally ambiguous aspect of Hogwarts. Professor McGonagall... Uh, in addition to being the head, the, the the teacher of Transfiguration, is also the head of Gryffindor House. Okay, so all the professors, Snape is the head of Slytherin House. Uh, I forget who Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw's Nobody heads cares. are, but it doesn't fucking matter. I think it's the cook, right, for Hufflepuff? The cook, I'm just the cook, I'm just the cook. <laughs> oh no, it's the head of all of our reviews turned into the exact same thing. <laughs> the same jokes. Uh, and it's so, what the kids love. and so, it's one of those things where you're like, this might be a conflict of interest. Little because conflict. Yeah, you that's just that's saw Harry I, nah, do something good. bad. But she knocks on the door, pulls another student out of potions class, out of Snape's class, and was like, "Fuck you, Snape! I'm, I gotta, I gotta uh, talk to this uh, kid." Coral. Oh, it was Coral. Yeah. I thought she needed like piles of wood. Also, wait, wait, wait for a second. Let's talk <laughs> She's about. Like, I need wood. Is what she said. Coral, like what? his class, like as they're That's walking, weird, there's this giant, like sounds like a goddamn dinosaur making yeah. a noise, and he's just holding an iguana. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and it cuts back, and then the, the dinosaur noise comes back. Weird. Um, iguanas are, are they magical? <laughs> Of course, she pulls uh, Oliver Wood out of class and is like, Mr. Wood, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Potter. Uh, Oliver is the head of our Quidditch team, and I've just found you your seeker for this year. And you're like, oh, he's not in trouble. If He's actually getting, uh, because of his misdeeds, mm -hmm. he's getting mm -hmm. elevated in the community now because now he's on the coveted, the first he has a coveted ever, spot yeah. as the first, first ever 11-year-old. She's like, Harry, I've got a lot of money on this season. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have you a lot of money. Snape right. has been winning everything yeah. for so long. They say it was like going to be like seven years of... Slytherin, Slytherin winning the house. What a dynasty. dynasty. And it's just like, she's sick of it, dude. Yeah, the Patriots like, no over snake here. is like rubbing in all their faces super subtly. Oh, I hate Bill him. Belichick is totally a Slytherin. That's totally That's a totally. dynasty. Yeah. Uh, it's established also that uh, Fred and George are on the team as well. They're beaters. Uh, everyone's freaking out. Everyone's like, this is a big deal, Harry. Uh, including Hermione, who's like, you don't understand how big of a deal this is because uh, you're not the only Potter to ever be a seeker. And she takes him over to like the case, and we see, of course, that James Potter was a seeker for his year, and they won. This they won the Quidditch Cup. And that's his dad, which is cool. Uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> that was his brother. Oh, yeah. No, why uh, they would still have that from like 30 years ago in the trophy case beyond me, but whatever. You think well, that other, broke some other records things, that year? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Record setting year. Uh, uh, as they head back to the common room, the staircase takes them to the third floor. They get caught by Filch's cat, so they run. Toward a locked door, of course, Hermione, uh, proving that she has quick wit, uh, uses Alohomora, uh, which is a standard book from the standard book of smell, mm -hmm. spells, page seven, to open up the door. They walk in, and what are they flying? Fluffy, 
who was a terrifyingly poorly animated <laughs> three headed dog. Cerebus. <laughs> yeah, very, very bad. Um, let's see. Uh, when they get back, they, they run out. And of course, Hermione mentions that she noticed the guard. She was like, they're like, why would they keep that thing there? She's like, you guys need to use your eyes more. Like, did you not see that it was guarding something? It was sitting over a trap door. It's clearly guarding something. And they're like, no, we didn't use our eyes. We were terrified. And I shit myself. Said Ron, <laughs> which uh, to, uh, to which I made it replied, disappear. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, aloha, mora. I just unlocked my bowels. That's where it is. Oh uh, and then of course, Hermione's like, "I'm going to bed before y'all come up with another plan to get us killed or worse, expelled." I love that line so much. And to which they're like, "Ron has a great uh, yeah. little drop." And he was like, "She's got to get her priorities straight, man." <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, now it's Quidditch practice, and Oliver lays out the rules. Uh, there's chasers, there's beaters, there's a quaffle, there's a bludger. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Because all that matters really is that you catch the golden snitch before the other team gets more points and catches the golden snitch. The golden snitch, of course, uh, for for Quidditch rules, gives you 150 points and ends the game. So strategically, you don't want to catch it if you're down, right? Or no, if you're down by, if it's zero to 160 and you catch the snitch, you still You've lose. Lost, yeah. yeah. So you still have to be up in points and then catch the it snitch. Doesn't end. Matter. They, it doesn't really. The movies go so light on Quidditch. Yeah. Yeah. But that's those are the general rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, Harry, Harry, you don't have to worry. Just Watch out for for balls that are flying at your face, uh, and uh, and catch the snitch, and we win. That's all you got to know. The the noises the the bludgers make terrifying, terrifying. really yeah. scary. <laughs> uh, in spells class, they practice when guardian Leviosa. This is a Flitwick's class, right? Barrett? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Ron sucks again at this. Hermione does it. <laughs> Hermione does it perfectly. Uh, and then just a quick, I have a note here. Just shout out to Warwick Davis, who uh, plays. Professor Flitwick. And you said, who gives a fuck about the other teachers in charge? Flitwick is in charge of Ravenclaw. Yeah, so give some Professor respect Flitwick. to Warwick Show Davis. Show your respect, Andy. Ravenclaw. Okay. What did I say? I'm just saying, man. No, no, no. He's trying to backtrack. Show and your yeah. respect. Trying to pretend he showed his, his respect. respect. Uh, let's see. Halloween time. I love I love it because we're skipping around here. We're, we're in Halloween time. We've got a couple months under the belt. Uh, the, instead of candles, it's flying pumpkins in the Great Hall. And there's just an so amazing cool. feast that, again, you think that you think that you can make the feast disappear from your stomach so you don't gain weight? Like some sort oh, of wizard that bulimia? Be That'd be awesome. No. Just like, God, I can eat more. <laughs> Isn't this great? Uh, just then, of course, uh, yeah, Harry's where asked. Where all the mashed food go? Uh, Harry, of course, uh, they had a little bit of a run in, in in Transfiguration class where Ron was like, Hermione's just a fucking nightmare. She's always such a know-it-all. Oh, look at me. It's been Guardian Maviosa. <laughs> not Maviosa. And, of course, she heard and ran away and crying. And it's like, F- fuck, Ron. Can you do nothing right? <laughs> like, you can't even talk <laughs> shit about people. You stupid, she was trying to help you, dude. Stupid little redheaded match. Just light yourself on fire and run away for Christ's sake. Uh, oh, uh, shit. I didn't realize Griff Hook was Ren Troyer. What? Yeah. In, in the, like, because for some reason I thought, I thought Warwick Davis was uh, Griff Hook or Grip Hook or what the Griff fuck Hook, his name? Griff Hook, yeah. From the, from the bank? It was uh, Vern Troyer. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Know That's that cool. Uh, Harry asks about where Hermione Jesus. is, and Ron's like, well, she's been crying in the bathroom all day and because I was a dick. And then, of course, Quarrel comes in and announces Troll in the Dungeon! And he's very, very excited about this, and he goes, just thought you should know. And then he passes out. Because he's he's just a little scaredy cat. Didn't uh, like that. What's that? It's like I'm like, what the fuck world are we in right now? That yeah. was that was too cartoony for me. I feel like he's been cartoony the whole time. A little cartoony. Like yeah, but walking in literally, oh! It's like, no, <laughs> of course, yeah. everyone starts freaking out, uh, and they get control, and, and McGonagall says, prefects, take the kids back to the dorms. Uh, Harry and Ron, of course, lay back, because they're like, what about Hermione, man? She doesn't know about this, and if that troll gets to her in the women's bathroom, well, it ain't gonna go good. We gotta go save our friend. Uh, and that's awesome. Of course, just then, they see the shadow come around the corner, and the troll is, in fact, headed. Why? The women's bathroom. Convenience. Just convenience creep. for the story plot. Uh, it's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> creep. That's funny. He's, He's a little creepy. Creep. He's, He's creeping funny. on it. You know what I mean? Creeping funny. on the eleven-year-olds. Uh, walks into the bathroom. Of course, her money's there, crying. She walks out, sees the troll, runs back into the stall, and the troll just fucking swipes and just takes out half Horrifying. the stalls with her. Um, Harry and Ron run in, and they're like, "Shit, what are we supposed to do?" Uh, let's see. Uh, Harry goes, "Fuck, I don't know what to do because I don't really know any spells, and I'm kind of actually pretty not a good wizard, despite the fact that everyone tells me I'm a good wizard. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump. fucking mount the thing. I'm gonna mount the thing and shove my wand up its up nose. Up its nose. Yeah. What the hell was your battle plan so there? So dumb. None. He just he was, had so many more options that he could have done. You could just grab him. Listen, just fucking crushed him. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna. Let's. This is where we're gonna get real for a second. Okay. <sighs> Finally, there are multiple moments in this story, and I know that these are young children, so I will tread lightly on this. But there is a chemistry here that is undeniable between Harry and Hermione. 
is all set. Stop saying How are you name saying? Yeah, it's all set. Morning? You know okay. it's not set. It that is. Way. It is. It, it is friendship. But there might be a little something. That, I'm not talking now. I'm just saying it's, you would you would assume that it would develop later into a romantic style love. Some I'm not going to hear it. Like, I'm willing to risk my life to shove my thing up a troll's nose just to save your life. Meanwhile, okay. Ron's back there like I didn't tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> friends are just friends, man. Yeah, man. Not, Sometimes the bond of friendship is very strong. Yes, and fools. Are like, ooh, Russian. they have to and be sometimes, in love. And sometimes you're on the road to a perfect place and you go, you know, we'll just pull off over to this other area that makes no sense. I digress. Uh, we're all on the shit. And now it's Ron, you got to fucking, you got to do something, man. Do something, you got to be, do something. You got to be useful. You got to be useful once. <laughs> and, and, and he goes, okay, I got to, I got to use the Wingardium Leviosa spell. And he starts, and she, and Hermione looks at him and she's like, maybe it's just a flip, flip the rest. I'm here with you. And this is when we're like, oh, this, this is a fucking racking team. Cause if he can just figure this out, they, they're going to be gel. Yeah. And he it's goes, like Wingardium. Gilmore learning how to putt. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. That was a big moment. Just go to your home. Place you <laughs> yeah. good for your home. Your home ball. Of course, he Wingardium Leviosa and the club comes out of the troll's uh, uh, hand. Troll looks up, club Conk. bounces him right on the fucking head knocks Knocked him out. out and Ron realizes and he just kind of like waves his head and then he grabs both of them and just smashes just them all together their fucking heads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that of course right as Professor McGonagall and Snake come in uh, and for no reason really Hermione takes the rap I, I didn't understand just like, tell the this. truth I was in here crying yeah. or I was in here taking a shit and uh, you know, <laughs> but like, but there's no reason to be yeah, like. Exactly. I thought I could defeat it. Can you and imagine no, <laughs> if they walk in? She goes, "What? I was taking a shit. <laughs> I was taking a dump." <laughs> and like, the yeah. trolls started coming, and Harry and Ron were like, "Oh shit! Hermione's in the restroom. We gotta go save her." Yeah, right. that's Would've it. Been so that's easy. Like Would have been so easy. But I think that the point was that she was like, I, "I'm not only do I forgive Ron for being an asshole, but like I want, I don't want these guys to get in trouble for helping me." And there's some miscommunication here, so I'm just gonna take the route for this. Uh, unnecessary, but cool that she did it. Uh, of course, Harry notices that Snape has a giant gash on his leg. Uh, Professor McGonagall gives the point the the boys five points each for just sheer dumb luck. And Harry's like, well, you know, yeah, for me, but Ron actually did something right for once. We should probably give him credit before he fucking <laughs> devolves into depression for being just a fucking useless piece of shit. Uh, next day, it's Quidditch time. Uh, Snape, we're on movie one, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speed it up just a bit. Just Snape comes. Uh, it's He's an eleven-year-old boy. <laughs> I know. Uh, sorry, guys. I'll, I'll speed. There's a lot of details here. Uh, Snape comes uh, for a little dose of the old psychological warfare I've heard before, and it's just like talking shit to Harry. Uh, of course. Harry hypothesizes that, that Snape let the troll in so he could sneak past the three-headed dog to get whatever the hell is down there, and the dog must have bitten him. Uh, whatever Dumbledore has in that vault, uh, the dog is hiding. Snake must want it. There's a little bit of lo leaps in logic here, but I buy it. Uh, mail time, of course. Harry uh, gets delivered the Nimbus 2000. We don't know who gave it to him, but he looks over Professor McGonagall. And again, proving that she might be like, I got a lot of money riding on this. Exactly, dude. Uh, she's like, I got you, big cat. Like, and I'm like, Again, ethics. Should you buy your student a $1,000 broom just so he can go win for your house? Maybe it's straight up like Maybe. college athletes, like you know, getting money under the table and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got all speeded along here a little bit. We go to the Quidditch game, of course. It starts. Uh, everything's going good for Gryffindor a little bit until they start getting down. Uh, Oliver gets knocked out. Uh, they don't have a goalie and now. They're down on the points. Of course, Harry's broom starts going nuts. We don't know why. Uh, Hermione looks over and sees that Snape's doing something. She's like, "Oh, he must be putting a spell on him." And at this point, I'm like, "Hey, McGonagall, look." Like he's trying to kill Harry, but no one ever rats out the professors, and I respect that because snitches get <laughs> stitches. That's right. Uh, of course, Hermione's like, "I'll take care of this. Don't worry about it." Runs over, lights his robe on fire. Uh, it could have burned him absolutely to death. They but of course, fine. that interrupts the spell. Uh, Harry gets back on the broom, sees the snitch, goes for it. Um, the the seeker on the other team goes for it too. He's 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 useless though. He was matter. just going behind it, not reaching for it or anything. It was so. It looked like it was so. That close one guy on Slytherin was just a like a yeah. terrible actor. Like yeah, they're all yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that guy with bad teeth. Fucking um, weirdo. Of course, uh, they, they they all they go into a nosedive to try to catch the snitch, and the Slytherin guy's like, "No, fuck this," and 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 pulls out early. Harry pulls out right as he's about to hit the ground, and it's neck and neck with the snitch. He reaches out, takes a one extra little step over his broom, like he surfs it. He's like surfing his broom, takes one little extra step, and then tumbles. Pops up, and they're like, oh, no, he looks like he's going to be sick, like he's going to throw up. And, of course, he barfs the snitch into his hand. Why? Because. That's just how he caught it, man. It, I get that. It's very indicative but of. But why? But it's because it's very indicative of Harry, just keep watching his the character, movies, right? where he just sort of. He's willing to do anything. He's willing to do anything, but also he's not the most competent person in the entire series. He kind of just, like, like, comes up gold sometimes. He fails upward. Mm. He fails upward a little bit. And he's got his friends around him to help him out. And it really is a team effort. And you start to realize that later. But I, I like this because it's like, he didn't mean to catch the fucking thing. He just did. And it's like, cool. And Well, he meant to win. catch the thing. He just didn't mean to catch it. In that film. way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they win. Awesome. It's fucking dope. Uh, let me see where I'm at here. Uh, 
Snitch, snitch, snitch. Oh, the kid's closing. Sorry. I, I skipped ahead here. I'm sorry. They go over to Hagrid uh, to tell him about Snake. Uh, and he's like, who do, he's like, he's that he got attacked by this dog. And Hagrid's like, who told you about Fluffy? Shit. Probably shouldn't have told you that. Love it. Love he's it. He's doing those God. lines. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, Snape's trying to steal it. And Hagrid's like, no, uh, he's not trying to steal it. And then, but accidentally in, in doing so, spills the beans about what Fluffy is guarding between him. Uh, he's like, whatever Fluffy's guarding, that is between Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> he's like, he, he's like, he's like, get out of here, you little fucking like, like mind readers, yeah. get out of here. Uh, Christmas time, and man, I want to go to Hogwarts so bad during Christmas mm, time. Mm. Uh, Ron and Harry are playing oh, Christmas time. Yeah, we're already Christmas. Ron and Harry are playing already. wizard chess, uh, and Ron is actually good at it, which is cool. Uh, Ron's family is going to Romania, so Ron's going to hang back with Harry, and it's cool. And it's like, fuck, man, that'd be cool if you're yeah, your best friend, just got this castle, yeah. and you just hang out. Of course, there's still rules, uh, but uh, Hermione's like. <laughs> <laughs> Quick but like, wouldn't it be cool if like they're just like there's no rules? You guys can stay up as late as you want. If only they had a way to go around the rules, you know. Well, Some way they couldn't be caught. Exactly. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Harry gets his first ever Christmas present, an old item from his father before he died. No name on the note, just says use it well. And um, we'll have to figure out who sent him that way later. Uh, Harry unwraps it, and of course, it is the cloak of invisibility, which is a very, very rare thing. And it's so cool super that Ron's rare. like, "Wow, that's super rare," but he's heard of it. Yeah. Like it's not like oh this is a crazy I, thing like there they float are, around. There are a bunch of like it's not like there's just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh Harry of course was like cool. Let's immediately use this cloak to sneak into the restricted area of the library which Hermione Duh. told him he needed to go into to find any sort of thing they could possibly find on Nicholas Flamel. It's at this point that you're like why wouldn't you just go to Dumbledore and be like hey we think this is what's happening because this whole thing could have been avoided if Dumbledore was like oh that's happening cool I'll just go get the thing get, get it the fuck out. Well of no because they would have gone and been like it's Snape it's Snape and he would have been like look I you're crazy. Fact, well it's he would have been Snape. like it's not Snape. Uh, that's a good point. I think it's a permission forgiveness later thing. Yeah. That's thing. fair. Uh, Harry of course pulls a, ba a book that, that screams at him as he opens it. Uh, he, he throws it back in but smashes a lantern and, and Filch comes in with his cat and he's like I know you're in here. I'm gonna fucking find you and kill you. I'm gonna eat your face because I'm a psychopath. Uh, Harry sneaks past him where he goes into the corridor and sees Snape threatening Quarrel. And he's like, You don't want me as an enemy. And you, at this point, you're like, what, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Here? Mm -hmm. Like Snape's threatening him. Maybe Quarrel called him out. We don't know. And I Snape reaches it. out to nothing. Uh, I think the immediate thought is like, Oh, look, Flamel's working for right. him and he's like, Fucking do the job, bro. Like, you know, yeah. Snape's getting Don't after. fuck with me. Yeah. So you don't know, but something bad's going on here. Of course, Harry runs around, uh, runs uh, into Filch's cat, and then Filch comes in and looks over and tries to, like, grab at him, and Harry runs away, and he hides in a room that has a giant mirror, and that mirror is the mirror of Eris' head. And he looks through it, and he sees his parents. And he's like, what the fuck is going on with this mirror? And he's like, and then he, it's really fucking sad because his mom That's puts her hand sad. on his shoulder yeah. and he looks in real life and it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just staring at this thing and it's heartbreaking. Of course, he's got to go. And he immediately runs back to Ron. And he's like, dude, you got to come see this mirror. This mirror should like, it's it's crazy. It's, it, it, it's it, my, my parents are weird. We got to figure out how to get this thing out. It goes and Ron's like, I don't see anything. And then Harry like steps aside and Ron's like, holy shit. I see myself as Quidditch captain, and I've just I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. Do you think and it tells the, the future? It's like how could it? My parents are dead. My parents it's are like, dead. Fuck. Shit, damn, damn. <laughs> shit, bro. Also, Eris said, well, "What? He it's, hasn't gotten to the that part yet. What? You, where what? he talks to Dumbledore later? But Dumbledore uh, doesn't. Exp well, all right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He doesn't. He doesn't. I don't think he explains it in this one. It's uh, desire. Yes, he does. Yeah, <laughs> it's desire. Yeah, that's all it is. Uh, well, it is. Well, okay, fine. Uh, later, of course, Dumbledore finds Harry sitting in front of the mirror again, uh, and he and Harry's like, he's like, "What the hell is this thing?" And, and and he's like, "Listen, this thing shows you your deepest and most desperate desires of the heart." I like how he sets this up. He goes, "Let's just put it this way: a man who is the happiest person on the planet that wants for nothing would look back, look into this mirror, and only see himself. Oh, so good. But everyone else sees what what they want, and he's like." He's like, listen, it's not real, and I need you to promise me. He's like, tomorrow morning, I'm going to move this thing, and I need you to promise to not go look for this. Well, I, I like that when that scene starts, he's like, here again. Yeah, well, he's like, oh, yeah, it's a whole he's horse. been there a whole bunch. It does not do to place. dwell on dreams. It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget yeah. to live. So and he good. says, man, people, men have wasted away in front of this thing and even gone mad. So, like, just don't, yeah. don't come look for don't this thing around. again. Don't mess around. Uh, Let me lock the door. We get... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> maybe lock it away or something. <laughs> like, yeah, like maybe don't put it in. <laughs> Again, Hogwarts, playing fast and loose with these rules. <laughs> yeah. Some kid, all of a sudden, you, you forget that kid. Where the fuck is that little Seamus kid been? You look up, he's dead. <laughs> he jumped in the room of spikes. <laughs> 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 spikes. Yeah. Yeah. Should have gotten in there. Ridiculous. Spikes fell backwards, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. We get another great shot of Harry and Hedwig. This is the great, this is an iconic shot of them walking through the snow. Uh, where he's got him on his arm, and then he releases Hedwig, and Hedwig flies up. And then when we catch back up with them again, it's no longer Christmas time. Now it's springtime. Another time change is great. I love the shot. Uh, and how could Hermione be so stupid? 
she was like, it's been in front of me the whole time. I checked this book out to do a little bit of light reading and just slams down this like thousand page book. And she's like, Nicholas Fumel is in this book. He is the person who's made the Sorcerer's Stone. He's one of the few people that actually has a Sorcerer's Stone. What does the Sorcerer's Stone do? Well, uh, uh, it gives you, it grants the, the user immortality. It gives him the, the elixir of life and does one other thing. Uh, it can turn metal into gold and produce the elixir of life, which will make you immortal. Uh, that's what's under the trap door. It must be what Fluffy is guarding. Hermione, again, proving you don't really need Harry or Ron. She could probably have figured this shit out herself. Smart yeah, kid. Fine. Smart you kid. Could have just called the movies Hermione. Hermione. <laughs> Hermione and the Adventures of Being Alone. They go to Hagrid and tell him. She wasn't uh, alone. Well, she would have been without Harry and Ron. Sure. Man, she sure. was a social pariah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they go to Hagrid and tell him that they know about the Sorcerer's Stone and they think Snape's trying to steal it and Hagrid's like no Snape is one of the professors guarding the stone uh, but they it's go to Hagrid at night they go to Hagrid at night right uh, but it's a waste of bloody time only two people know about the uh, how to get past <laughs> Fluffy him and Dumbledore what <laughs> what are you laughing at okay uh, it's him and Dumbledore and he's like shit I shouldn't have told you that um, it's established also that Hagrid won a big Can you uh, sell it to assets yeah great it's, it's established of course that Hagrid uh, has a dragon egg and someone, a stranger gave him that, which is weird, because Hagrid's always wanted, the thing he's wanted most in life is a dragon. Uh, so it's cool. The egg hatches, of course, and it's a Norwegian, uh, a Norwegian Ridgeback, uh, who he calls Norbert. Uh, Hagrid's always wanted this thing, but unfortunately, it's actually illegal to keep a dragon here. So don't tell anyone about it. But I love the name, Norbert. It's so cute. Yeah, Norbert. <laughs> uh, of course, but who's, uh, who's spying on them? That piece of shit, Draco Malfoy, just mm. out there. Just Peeking probably. Do you think he was slow jerking it too oh, out there? Yeah, definitely. God. Like I'm gonna fucking get these yeah. guys. Oh, daddy like it. Uh, Jesus. Of course, uh, we're like, this is not good. Can we pull this up? Yeah. The world needs to see this. <laughs> Look at those wow. sexual looks, dude. <laughs> That's really good. That's not a sexual. Yours is a sexual look. <laughs> He is not sexual at all. Corey Cundy. God damn it. Like, I his look you. is, I don't know what to think of this. Your look is, <laughs> no, I, his is I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued I, by I feel this. like his is like, am I going to kill this kid? Yeah. Am I going to murder this child? <sighs> it's like, I'm horny. No. <laughs> like, this kid looks a lot like his I mother. Like it. You know I'm going to grab my no, wallet right now. No, it looks just like his dad. All right. Mother's eyes. Ah. Uh, of course, Malfoy <laughs> immediately goes and and and, and squeals on them. Uh, he goes straight to McGonagall and, is, and she takes fifty points from each of the students and gives them detention, and that includes Malfoy. And she's like, he's like, whoa, what the funny. fuck? And she's like, yo, bro, first off, I'm the head of the opposite house of you, so of course I'm gonna fuck you over because ethics in this in this place <laughs> <mean> absolutely <laughs> yeah. nothing. Uh, and as good as your intentions were, you were also breaking the rules by being out of class. So Great. fuck you, little shit. Yeah, a little of course, shit getting it. Immediately have to serve detention, which I like. Like you gotta serve detention. They don't. I mean, maybe it's the next day. Who knows? But they just fuck it. We're gonna also jump detention. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, Terrible. you're going to the dark forest. Yeah. What? That's a death sentence. Yeah. Nah, they had a dog with them. They were fun. But Fang, of course, is a coward. So yeah. good luck with him. Yeah. Uh, they split up. He's like, "What are we looking for?" And he's like, "Listen, I found some unicorn blood. We got to go find whatever's hunting these unicorns down and figure out what the fuck's going on." We're looking awesome. for a dying unicorn. Put me in a room so that we can <laughs> like, end its pain. I'm yeah. 11 years old. I. I Proven that I cannot do a single spell. Put me. I cannot defend in the myself. Forest to find the dead unicorns yeah. and, and the and, thing that's haunting them. And the about. worst part of it is, I'll be with Hermione. You and Harry go do that thing, or I'll be with Ron. You and Harry go off. Two eleven-year-olds, like, like unsupervised. Tell you that's what, fine. There's yeah. always a friendly centaur. Listen, around. man, you gotta grow up fast <laughs> at Hogwarts. That's what makes a wizard a wizard. Yeah. You either live or you fucking die. Also, that's how it goes. We yeah. know that Hagrid is dumb. Like he's he's a dumb guy that made a. It, it frankly. It's uh, McGonagall's fault. Yeah. Like, she should have like set the rules and been like, hey, don't split up. Again, I think part of her is hoping that Malfoy gets killed and thus weakening this living house it. so that her house can achieve greatness. Yeah. Uh, they look and, of course, uh, they, we see what unicorn blood looks like. And, Tim, what does it look like to you? That's right. The liquid metal effect from uh, Super Mario 64. That's oh, I thought okay. to you. Yeah. Okay. That's what I've I always loved. Uh, both good answers. How does the music go? Yeah, the, the metal music. Yeah. <laughs> metal Mario, it's so good. Uh, we don't really see what Hagrid does, but we do catch up with Harry and Malfoy, and Malfoy's like, this is fucking dumb. And for the first time in my life, I find myself agreeing with Malfoy. I'm like, this is a very irresponsible thing to have these kids do, but it doesn't matter because they come across the unicorn and something horrifying eating and drinking its blood. Really scary. Really scary wraith-like creature that looks up and has fangs and a silver face and it's like ah. It's the thing you see is that when you watch this movie as a kid you're like oh I'm scared right now. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel fear. Uh, it of course goes straight for Harry uh, and would have killed him too were it not for uh, Ferenz 
I think is the name of that yeah, character. Friends. Friends. Yeah. Friend. Uh, Our friend. friends. The one uh, who is dude that was fucking J.K. Rowling. Giant magical <laughs> centaur who oh may or may not allegedly wow. have banged <laughs> J.K. Rowling guys, with his very average human sized dick. We're going to make a lot of centaur jokes later. Just leave it for there. Okay. He, of course, scares. Uh, the wraith-like figure away, and it floats away in this very weird kind of way. Uh, and he's like, "Harry Potter, uh, uh, you should not have come here. Obviously, it's a dumb <laughs> idea." He's for like, you "It is here. super dangerous. Yeah. There's yeah. The rules against this shit." And of course, they lay down. Uh, they lay down. What's going on? He's like, "Why would someone be doing this?" And he's like, "Well, if you drink a unicorn's blood, it's a, it's a terrible crime. They are they are the most pure of animals ever. But if you drink their blood, it will keep you alive. But you pay a terrible, terrible price for it." Again, uh, awesome world building. Like I love all. Yeah, this. you have I love like, all this lore. You will live really like cool. a, a half life, life basically. Curse. Is what he says. Uh, just like the game. And, and he's like, uh, and he's like, who would do such a thing? And and Franz is like, could you think who? of no one that would do that? And who he's like, indeed? Voldemort. And he's like, yeah, dude, I could have just said that, but it's yeah. way more dramatic for me to ask you the question. No, it's stupid. <laughs> to answer Why your question, the question. <laughs> like, I feel um, like that's his, where his mind should have gone first. Right. You know? uh, back in the Gryffindor Carmen, they surmise that Snape is trying to steal the stone for Voldemort, who is still alive in the forest and staying alive on unicorn blood. Uh, do, you, uh, do you think they're trying to kill you, Harry? And he's like, I think they would have killed me if it wasn't for that centaur. Like, I would have, we need to go to. But like we should go to I actually don't go to Dumbledore yet. They talk about Dumbledore and he's like listen as long as you're here and Dumbledore's here You're gonna be fine because Dumbledore of course is the only person that Voldemort ever feared and remember that because it's the coolest fucking thing anyone's ever said mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's FYI, true. it's true. It's he's fucking right. cool right. uh, <laughs> The next day the kids have to take the urine exams and Hermione has a great uh, moment where she's like Stop I was saying they the were name that way <laughs> Hermione. Thank you. Whatever. I mean Hagrid says Hermione. Hagrid says it like Hermione. Yeah, that's how they say it. Are those. you Hagrid? <laughs> I, I thought it was Hermione. <laughs> What's that? When I first read it, I thought it was Hermione. Oh, same. Yeah. Wow. I was. I thought uh, Sirius Black was Cyrus Black, mm -hmm. and then I heard the movies. I was like, Oh, that's right. There's another Val in there. Uh, the next day, of course, the kids are taking exams, and Hermione what uh, is it was like, I've always heard these were terrible, but I really enjoyed them. And and Ron's just befuddled because all the words hurt his head. That's what happened. Uh, Harry, <laughs> Harry, of course, uh, Harry's scar hurts, uh, and he surmises that it must have been. He's like, This must be some sort of early alert, like Harry Potter sense. Where like if danger's near, like I get it, and we'll call it Potter sense from now on. Potter uh, sense. They spot Hagrid playing the, the flute, Potter and the a, light, a light bulb goes off in Harry's mind. Where he's like, "Of course, it's too much of a coincidence. I should have seen this." Hagrid's always wanted a dragon. It just so happens that he's he's got all the information needed to pe sneak past this thing, and someone came and gave him a dragon. So they go over and they're like, "Hey." The stranger that that gave you this dragon, what was he like? And he's like, I don't remember what he looks like. Uh, and he's like, well, did, did you give him any information about this? He's like, no, I didn't give him any information about this. He just seemed really interested in like how to tame beasts. And I told him I was like, the easiest way to tame a beast is like like Fluffy is just to play music for him. He'll fire right, fall right asleep. I shouldn't have said that. And realizes he's a complete fucking moron. And again, why anyone would would entrust him with this incredibly important thing is beyond me. But we love we love Dumbledore's got his reasons. Don't give him the nuclear codes. Exactly. Don't <laughs> give him the ball, for Christ's sake. Uh, he played music and he was right asleep. They raced to Professor McGonagall. This is where they, this is where I'm like, okay, they finally got yeah. smart. Go to Professor McGonagall and be like, we got to talk to Dumbledore right now uh, because some shit's going down. And, and also, Hagrid's a moron. We yeah. can't <laughs> talk to and him. McGonagall's like, I know, I know, but also, yeah. shouldn't one of you be practicing Quidditch? A lot of money riding on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, she's like, no, we can't talk to Dumbledore. He's been called away. Uh, how do you know about the Sorcerer's Stone? Just mind your own fucking business. Uh, he got an urgent owl. He's got to go to the ministry. But then they went and they were like, oh, it's Snape. And she was like, the fuck are you talking about? It's yeah, definitely Snape, not it's Snape. Snape. Yeah. It's definitely not Snape. No, for a fact that it's not Snape. Right. Of like, course, right. Snape catches in the corridor and he's like, oh, a bunch of uh, Gryffindors like yeah. you hanging out. Go People might think you're up sun. to shit. And it's like, it's that classic thing where like when you're up to shit. And you see other people, you blame it on them, so they don't. They, you deflect the blame. They're like, "Oh, Snape's definitely up to shit," because he says we're up to shit. Doesn't matter. Let's move on. Uh, they sneak out of the common room. They, so they're like, "Listen, tonight we got to go in there. We got to take the stone." Now, here's the one problem I have with this movie. Okay, the stone is being guarded by a three-headed dog. That is at least one level of security. What the fuck were they gonna do with the stone <laughs> once they found it? What were they gonna do? Turn metal to gold. Walk around with it. Like, oh, we're be it's better off in our possession? I, I, Snape would have been like, Poof, you're fucking dead. I thought that <laughs> they thought, like, it was... Were they just getting it to guard it themselves? Or were they getting it because they thought that was the night he was going to get in there I think they get were getting it. it so that they could hide it again and guard it themselves. But it's just not... Uh, again, a, gav yeah. a, gav a, gav a cadaver, you're fucking dead. Snape Avada could kill Kadaver, Avada yeah. Kadaver, you. Avada kill you right now. Yeah. Dumb mm -hmm. idea, but they're dumb kids and they're, they're, they're fools. Corpus they're fools and they're rushing in, right? Candy Corpus, yeah. Uh, of course, they're like, we gotta go at this thing now. They try to sneak out of the common room, and they look over and they see a toad. And Neville Longbottom is there, and he's like, listen, motherfuckers, I don't know what you're up to, 
But we keep losing. We're hemorrhaging I'm points right now. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> so you're not going out. And Hermione drops one. him like a fucking bad habit. She's like, sorry about this. Bang, concussion. He Broken just skull. Him. Yeah. It just, just bleeds concussed. out. <laughs> and of course, this is where I, as a person who suffered from claustrophobia, get terrified. Because yeah. I was like, I'm just going to sit here paralyzed forever, still understanding what's going on with me. It's like when people go under for surgery, but it doesn't quite put them out, so they're aware of what's going on. It's terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Terrifying. Fuck you, Hermione. I would never forgive you for this. Unless you went with me with the problem. Right, relax. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. All right, let's it's go. Like the, it's like a Senior Rick and Morty. Problem. There's that, that one drug they take where they... Right? I don't know. Patrificus don't know, Totalis is the, the name of the game. Of course, Ron's like, dude, you're a little scary sometimes. Brilliant, but scary. Yeah. Like another, I think, really cool line. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, they enter the room with a third floor and find Fluffy fast asleep. Snape's already been here and he's put a spell on the harp and it's playing. They're like, okay, let's move his paw. They move his paw and then all of a sudden everything goes quiet. And they're like, is that... Really quiet in here, and then just a big old fucking piece of slobber hits Ron's but it shoulder. It's terrible. I've been Ron like, oh, for the rest of the day. Just why grab it? Well, Ron probably smells a little grubby cubby anyway because he's the dirty kid in class. So they're like, shit. They look up. The thing is crazy. It goes. It bites the trap door. They jump down to the trap door and they're like, oh, thank God we're fucking safe now, except we've landed it in this creepy thank God ass. We are going to fall shit. into a series of three rooms that yep. each use one of our skills perfectly. Right. Uh, they do that, of course. Uh, Hermione has read uh, about uh, herbology and figures out that this is Devil Snare. Figures out you got to relax. Does the sunlight thing to a cool. We go into the next room. There's keys there. Of course, this is Harry's challenge where there's a broom and he's got it. They find the one key. But the second he go, he grabs it, these things come at him like a swarm of bees. They get to that room. And the next room is chess. Uh, it's wizard chess. He's like, do you think this is gonna be like wizard's chess? And he tests one of the moves out, and the thing just explodes Dude, the pawn. This is one of the fucking coolest things yeah. awesome. yeah. I've ever seen. And I, I was like, oh, shit, this is so tight. This is so hype. I love the look. The moment they actually start playing, though, mm -hmm. and, like, the, the cuts they're using, I'm like, this is trash. It was weird. It's just this very sucks. old It could have been yeah. so cool. The and yeah, the editing, and, like, just, like, the weird slow-mo they did. Why parts, did they like, do that? This I'm looks so like a made-for-TV movie. They like, needed, they, they just, I mean, the full, they can't show the full chess game. I, I, I get like that, hours. but, like, I get it. could have had, like, they might as well have had Star Wars. Do they have, they had, like, slow fades, right? Yeah. That's what it was. Slow fades, it was slow-mo while fading. Yeah, there's no, by the way, there's like Weird no other zooms. dissolves in this yeah. movie at all, and they just yeah. use hell long dissolves. Like we gotta do something here. And what's up with that piece that's just like cuddled over like a little turtle? The bonds? Those are the I bonds. hate, I hate, bonds. I hate the way it's shaped. I just hate. I that. like it, dude. He's ready to strike. <laughs> they get down to the final few moves, and they're about to win. But Hermione and Harry kind of figure. Harry figures it out. He's like, uh oh. And Ron's like, that's right. Uh, I'm gonna move into position. The queen's gonna take me out. And then of course Harry, that bag leaves you free to checkmate. The checkmate. King. And Hermione's like, no, you can't do this. And Ron's like, listen, we all know. I am useless. useless yeah. So let me just do this one for you. And it's a really touching moment because he's like, yeah. let me just do this for you guys. Dope Everyone shit. knows that. He's like, I don't know why I know this, but I just know that Harry is the one person that needs to go through that door. Yeah. And Hermione's like, fuck, you're right. Bye, Ron. And then he gets exploded. And he's concussed. fucking exploded, As long dude. as it stabs the there, thing and doesn't slash at it, we'll be good. Exactly. Yeah. And luckily, well, it just... There, there why did he ride the night? Because Harry, had... Harry and Hermione were their own... Spaces. Well, that that, but I think that's why he rode the night. Someone night. had to control yeah. the game, the game pieces, and there were two empty spaces. So I think he had to just call the ball. I don't know. It makes sense. Well, in I, the, we I have to the isolate night, Harry somehow. I think the night was also empty. It didn't have a person on the horse. Oh, that might have been it. Yeah. So we had to ride. Uh, I imagine. I, uh, so, I, uh, yeah. so I think what happens in the books is that the knight is already on the horse, and he asks the knight, "Hey, I want to be this guy." And so the knight gets off the horse, and he gets on it. Cool. I don't. I don't remember I'm, I'm, that at all, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of the room resetting it itself for like however many people there are coming in and all the like everything fixing itself. Who's, whose challenge was this, by the way? This is McGonagall's. McGonagall's. That was McGonagall's. Real good at chess. Was Madame Hooch's the one before? <laughs> no, that was uh, Flitwick because uh, the, oh. the keys oh. were yeah. charmed. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> who's was the, who, oh, the, the herbology, herbology professor? Uh, uh, professor Sprout, who is the head of Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Now, worth noting, though, this is one of the omissions of the book and the movie. There were two more challenges, right? There was Quarrel's challenge and mm -hmm. Snape's challenge. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. Well, we're done. We're going into the Quarrel room. Yeah. Do you want to I talk think, about it now? I think he's doing a bit later. Okay, Ooh. you're doing a bit later. Cool. Uh, so, of course, uh, he's like, look, Ron's fucked up. Hermione's like, I don't know what to do. He's like, stay with him. I actually run back, uh, send an urgent owl. Get, get Dumbledore here. This shit just got real, and we're out of our depth. I'm going to, instead of helping you, I'm going to go into this other room real quick and just try to confront I'm sure it's not, whoever's it's not in there. I'm too crazy. Whoever's gotten past. Yeah, exactly. Try to take him. Whoever could have figured out all this stuff with relative ease, apparently, because yeah. it only it hasn't been that long. I can take him. Of course, he goes into the room just hoping it's, or thinking it's going to be Snape. And who do we find? Professor Quarrel, not Snape. 
uh, that day. And Twist. It and it's a twist, twist. and you're like, <gasps> ah. and then you start thinking back flashback every time Snape was there, Coral was there over his shoulder, and like, oh shit, when the scar hurt, he was there during the during the Quidditch match, he's like, I would've fucking killed you if it weren't for Snape uh, doing that counter chant, or the counter yeah, with thing, yeah. and then someone lit it on fire, and was, all shit went to hell, I'm trying to kill you from day one, but Snape figured it out that it was me, and he hasn't left me alone. It's been a year. It's been a year. Since mm-hmm. Halloween, right? And he Coral out has Halloween. it. Eh, four or five months, you couldn't get out of that fucking trap yeah. door, Snape has been yeah. on you like snake on shit. Also, why didn't Snape tell Dumbledore? Like, hey, dude, this dude's fucking trying to get the stone. Kill him. Dumbledore. Yeah. A vaga a, a vaga <laughs> cadaver. Well, you're yeah. dead. Yeah, 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 Doesn't yeah. matter. Makes for a cool story. Um, the, of course, the final production uh, room, we see the the mirror of Aerith. Uh And this is awesome. I love this because he's like, I see this here. I know this is a fucking thing. I don't know how to get the stone out of it. And Harry goes over and looks over and he sees his reflection. Uh, and, and his reflection reaches into his pocket and goes, hey, dude, it's in your pocket. And Harry's like, there's something has swollen in my pocket for the first time. Okay. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. Okay. And it's the stone. And okay. And Not Voldemort, the bone. Uh, and Voldemort's like, use the boy. Yeah, use the boy. And you're like, well, who the fuck With just his said nose, that? You know what I mean? And then we nose, get man. the great reveal. And he's like, Let you me get talk the to reveal. Him. Let me talk to him. And he undoes the turban on his head. And who's hanging out on the back of his head in this freaky ass fucking way? You'd think maybe suffocating because there's no air in that thing. Voldemort. It's and, I'll, and I will say, in there. earlier I was just like, oh, obviously, he has, there's something up with his fucking head. Did not expect that. Did not expect yeah. it. I, I thought snake surprise. related somehow because nah. he had the, with the stutter and then we saw the snake at the beginning of the movie. I was like, he got some snake shit going on. <laughs> no. Nah. It's, it's a, a guy's face on his, yeah. the back of his head. <laughs> uh, so Harry makes a run for it, and Quirrell just goes, snaps his fingers, flames pop up, uh, mm-hmm. getting in his way. And then Voldemort's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just chill this out yeah, a little let's bit. let's talk it out. Let's talk Bro, it out. Bro, like, we don't know each other. You don't know me. Why don't, I, why don't I make you an yeah. offer? You miss your parents? I saw your parents in the mirror earlier. We'll get them out. We'll get them out, man. We'll bring them back. Like, you it's and me. Fine. Just give me a stone. It'll be cool. Right? And Harry's like, oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> then he looks in the mirror, and his parents are gone. And he's like, you're a lying motherfucker. Like, you can't get them out of there. They're dead. Like, he realizes that this is just total bullshit. And yeah. then he's like, what's that? I, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, it was a very subtle oh. thing. Because I, I don't remember seeing it. I was like, I remember thinking, like, how, what? Well, he, he starts to try to sell him on this idealism of, like, uh, yeah, there's yeah. no, like, right there's and no wrong. right and wrong. And that's, that's when the herons, like, kind of fade away to remind Harry, like, that's not what we stand yeah, for. Right. Real. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really good. He's like, there's no good or evil. There's only power, and those who uh, are too weak to seek it. Oh, Together, man. we can do extraordinary yeah, things. And then cool. par- Harry sees his parents disappear and realizes that if he were to do that, like, yeah, the, it would just be bad. And so he goes, you're a liar, and Quill's like, I'm going to tag the motherfucker. Have you ever heard of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen Sand? It's terrible. Uh, Harry, uh, of course, uh, Quirrell grabs him, and Harry grabs his hands, and they start burning, and then Harry realizes, holy shit, I don't know I what the, the fuck's going hands. on. But I got the touch! <laughs> and just grabs his face. Yeah, yeah right away. Just straight forward. Good for him. Why not? Just kill the motherfucker. I was Ice. telling Kevin I, w- cool. I would like to see if, uh, like, this is something that I want to openly challenge Corridor crew to do, is, like, deep fake the, the most recent, like, deep fake the Ray way finds. Voldemort... Voldemort has looked for the entirety yeah. of the series because he has on, a nose in this and he doesn't have a nose in the, in the yeah, rest of it. Yeah, like he he has like that little like snake yeah. nostril shit. I, I'd like to see that. Uh, although there's reasons why he wouldn't look like that. Yeah, there, there's this possibility of depending on when he. Yeah, when yeah. we'll go that later. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it could be explained. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, Harry turns into ash, and no repercussions for him no, committing Harry, his quarrel. Quor- no, Harry turns quarrel to ash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quor- quarrel goes to ash. And Harry's like, cool, I beat him. I didn't just commit murder. Ten points for hey, me. I've committed murder. Quarrel being like, what sort of magic is this? It's like, damn, this does not look like he's enjoying no, it. He, you know? he died a horrible <laughs> yeah, death. Harry very painful. Didn't think anything of it. You never, no. never revisit that again. Good no therapy murder. needed. Just murdered yeah. him. It's fine. Uh, of course, everything's cool. We think it's great, but Dumbledore's not dead. His spirit actually is there. Nope. And his spirit forms and is like... Voldemort. Uh, Voldemort, excuse me. Uh, Voldemort's like, uh, I'm going to go right through you, bro. I can't really hurt you anymore, but I'm going to fucking go through your chest. That was weird, <laughs> right? What was that? You think it'd also be like this? Out. Oh, the stone's right there. Let me figure out a way to get the stone, but yeah. I guess he needed a human life for I it. I guess. Uh, why didn't he just jump, like, instead of jumping through Harry, why didn't he attach himself into the back and control him? I, I, think, I, I think you have to be willing for that to happen. Yeah. You have to be a willing participant. Yeah, and Quarrel so. was like, I have nothing in life. I will do yeah. this for you. And also, maybe he just got off on someone being on his back. Who I knows? think Quarrel's story is a little sadder in the books, but. Barrett will tell us. Uh, of course, Harry wakes up a few days or weeks later. I can't remember in the in the hospital ward. Felt like uh, a day later, maybe, maybe a day later. And his friends, uh, he's like, "Oh, you've had a lot of visitors. Your friend Ron and Hermione were very, very uh, worried about you." He's like, "Oh shit, are they okay?" He's like, "Dude, don't worry, they're fine. Ron's fine. 
we can't tell if he's dumber or not because he can't really get any dumber than Ron is. So God. the concussion may or may not have been anything God. to him. Doesn't matter. You're uh, great, man. Harry's like, what happened to the stone? And Dumbledore's like, it's been destroyed. My dear friend and I, Nicholas Flamel, had a conversation and we decided it'd be just best to be destroyed, destroyed, of course, because of your actions and because if you had done nothing, they would have never been able to get the stone. But you did something. So now my friend Nicholas Flamel has to put all of his uh, affairs in order because he's going to fucking die. Yeah. So you could have just been cool, Harry, and done nothing, but yeah. you did something yeah, and that's cool, but my friend's going to die now. And he's like, well, how did the stone get in my pocket anyway? And this is great. Dumbledore's like, uh, only a person who wanted to find the stone but did not want to use it, could get it. So and he goes, and that's cool, one of man. my more brilliant ideas. Yeah, I like yeah. how he was like, that was a really good idea. That was a really good idea. That was a really dope. good idea. He's like, wow, <laughs> so if you'd just, commu again, he communicated to me that I just could, like you had the shit under lock, like handled, I yeah. would have just not done any of this. It would have stayed fine. in the, it, like, if you had told me. And maybe we could have killed that, like, Voldemort once and for all, because we would have figured it out that Yeah, far, well, let's keep going. Anyway, is Voldemort dead? And and Dumbledore's like, I don't think so, dude. Like, no idea. there's ways for him to come back. And honestly, I don't have a good feeling about this. We have a lot of movies to go. <laughs> and, then, and then yeah, we got was eight more movies, ten more movies. And then he's like, What the hell was that? Why 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 did I touch him and it burned? And he goes, Well, um, he couldn't bear to have you touch him because Harry, your mom sacrificed herself for you, and that leaves a mark. And Harry goes, the scar. And he's, he's like, like, No, no, no you not, idiot. Not the scar, you dumb fuck. <laughs> no, the power of love. He's like, Love. Yeah. It leaves a mark in there. Right. And he's like, That's why he couldn't touch you because you you know you were you, you were, were saved loved. from fear love. Uh, and then he goes, oh, look at this, Birdie Bots, every flavor of beans. He's like, I was very unfortunate when I was a child to have gotten a vomit flavored one, but you know what? I think I'll just try one more. And he tries one. He's like, hmm, earwax. Fuck. Great. Just well done. We're like, does he like it or not? It doesn't matter. Uh, look like you like it. <laughs> I feel like he's just like, I'm never doing this shit again. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, next up we get a, a very endearing scene where Harry sees Hermione and Ron uh, on the balcony. He's like, all right. And my first thought for this was like, this motherfucker's been in a coma for 15 years. He walks out and he just sees them together. He's like, damn. I lost my chance. Damn, I lost my chance. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. What Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Nah. Uh, and he goes, all right, that wrong? And he's like, yeah. He's like, Hermione, he's like, she's like, never better. And they just have a nice little touching moment. It's not like over gushy, but they're like, we, we did something cool. Uh, we did night, something cool. And night in the Great Hall, of course, we get the house cup, uh, which, of course, we have in claw right now it, it, during this podcast is ahead 15 points to zero for everyone else. Uh, fourth place, Gryffindor with 312 points. Hufflepuff has 352 points. Second place, Ravenclaw, a little burn blue, 426 points. Uh, and then the first, of course, Slytherin, 42 points. And we noticed that, the, by the way, the, the hall is decorated with Slytherin banners because they have, yeah. I think, been the champions for the last couple of years. Seven years. Seven right? years. Uh, Hermione. Uh, and then uh, cool. Let's give him out. And then Dumbledore interrupts. He's like, you know, I got a couple last minute points to award. Bullshit, uh, to Wait, dude. Like after congratulating, yeah, him, you know, do it before. What a, what a dick. What the fuck what is up with this? Move. Again, it's cool. Bias is noise. all hell, man. We have established there are no moral ethics at Hogwarts. <laughs> There's good <laughs> guys and bad guys. And it's one of those things where you're like, maybe Dumbledore, maybe. If you were just cool with the Slytherins, you could turn that house from being a fucking place of ill repute. To being like an actual cool house, but no, let's fuck him over again. McGonagall slips him like a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> McGonagall just nice. slips him a twenty dollar bill and then does a bump because you know she's fucking railing <laughs> in the background. <laughs> she's bad. she's making sports bets. Call him Uncle Danny. She's like, here you go. Uh, R.I.P. Uncle Danny. Uh, of course, got a couple last minute points. Best working in town, dude. Hermione uh, gets fifty points for cool use of intellect while others were in great peril. Fifty points. Ron for the best played game just of chess up rules. that Hogwarts has ever seen in these in these in this many years. Fifty points. And then of course Harry. For pure nerve and outstanding courage, 60 points. And that's cool. And, and also an additional 100, because I'm sorry that you had to fucking, like, witness a unicorn being <laughs> eaten alive. <laughs> that was, my bad. My I was bad. really scared. I was gone. I should not have been giving you detention. Usually you just sit in a room yeah. and do homework. Uh, uh, it's funny that, like, at no point where they're like, oh, hey, we're going to have to take some points away for killing a, a teacher. Like, that seems like that should be a rule regardless. Uh, yeah, the teacher ten, ten points away from Gryffindor for murdering a professor. Yeah. I, know, I know that, like, future spoiler, but just, like, keeping it vague. Like, do the points start making any more sense? No, yeah, no, really. no, no. Really, no, the points no, are just like, like, like is it yeah. still always as bullshit? Just like Gryffindor, the points stop being a thing. I'll be honest soon. with you, I don't think anyone gets points for the rest of the series except for Gryffindor because mainly we focus on Gryffindor. There's a couple Gryffindor. more points. Does moments. like Hufflepuff get some at some point? No, no, right. no God, they no. take it, some it, away. It, but just be, it, it, they really focus on it this time because it's Harry's first experience. Yeah. Right. But after his first year, it's like we don't give a yeah, fuck nobody about gets this. Fuck. Uh, we're so we're not talking about Quidditch yeah. too much more either. <laughs> but uh, but if you notice, the points uh, actually add up. They don't beat Slytherin; they've tied Slytherin, and, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." Uh, but then, of course, Griffin, uh, Albus has one more. Uh, some more points to award, and I oh, fucking right. love this. That's a good this moment. Good because moment. he goes, let me tell you guys, it takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to your enemies, but a greater deal more to stand up to your friends. And that's why I'm giving 
10 points to Neville Longbottom. Seems yeah. like and it takes the, less because I love his reaction. It's but adorable. Dude, it's such an endearing yeah. reaction because yeah. you can tell this kid, like, all real talk is like, no one likes him. He's kind of a loser. <laughs> God damn it. And like, Who do no, you but like, for reasons why later, but like, the Longbottoms have not had a good history and he's not. He doesn't have a lot of friends. And mm -hmm. there's just this moment where he's like, wow, I've actually done something like noteworthy. And it's the, a very the, endearing the moment. The look of shock. God, his is, grandma like, is going to be so proud of him. Yeah, that kid. Yeah. I mean, that, and the kid that plays him, I think, just does a great Neville yeah. Longbottom the entire time. Very I thought that was a very, very touching now. moment. Some of course, adult. Gryffindor wins the house cup. Dumbledore claps his hands. Fuck you, Slytherin. Gryffindor's coming <laughs> down. Uh, none of us are excited here because none of us are Gryffindors. Like flicks. But yeah, it changes so true, cool. Nick. And then, uh, of course, uh, we go back to Hodgemeade's. Hodge, Hogsmeade station uh, where the train is about to pull out and take everyone home uh, and Hagrid's like hey I got a little surprise for you and he gives him this, this book and Harry opens it up and it's a picture book of his youth and it's his parents and they're moving and it's cool and I just love that uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, Harry's like thank you for everything and Hagrid's like well, yeah you're awesome dude uh, <laughs> yeah you're awesome dude and they yeah, give him a hug and then he goes hey by the way if, you, if, if your cousin gives you shit when you get home you can always threaten to give him a pair of ears to go along with that tail and Harry's like you know it's illegal for us to do magic outside of Hogwarts, he's like, he's like, he goes, I do, but your cousin doesn't. So he's like, it's okay to threaten his life as long as you don't do anything, because you won't go to jail. Uh, later, the, later on, does Harry play a little fast and loose with that? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yep. uh, and then at the train, we get the great line where Harry joins back up with Hermione and Ron, and Hermione goes, "It feels strange to be going home, doesn't it?" And Harry looks back at Hagrid, and of course, over his shoulder is Hogwarts Castle, and he's like, "I'm not really going home." And he's like, "I'm not going home, not really." And the train pulls away, and in the distance we see Hogwarts Castle, and that is it. <sighs> so Ladies good. And gentlemen, gotta love it. Andy, can you prep us for this one right here? I don't. I, you told me this too late. I, I did. And yeah, I, give me a song, Andy. Give me a song. Boss baby, book corner. Boss baby, uh, book corner. Is He's he? gonna tell us a story. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to what the Boss it? Baby Book Order, where Bear Courtney will tell us some of the differences from the movie compared to the book. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Boss Baby's Book Corner, a podcast within a podcast where I share the most important details from the Harry Potter books that were cut from the movies. My name is Barrett Courtney. I am your host, and this week we will be talking about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone, if you're a dork that doesn't live inside the yeah. U.S. Yeah. Um, number one. Oh my God, no, it's a philosopher. They do magic too. To give context. <laughs> I'm a huge uh, fan of the Harry Potter books. If we're talking just books, Harry Potter might be my favorite like franchise IP of all time. Fuck yeah. My love for the movies, however, definitely vary from movie to movie. Yeah. Uh, so I thought this would be fun to for the book nerds like me who are sticklers for details. And I thought it might be interesting for audience members like Tim who are going uh, yeah. through this for the first time and uh, learn some uh, extra stuff because God knows they will never read the books. Uh, sure. So we're starting with Sorcerer's Stone, which is only 308 pages. So it wasn't that hard for the first uh, for the first movie to get all of the important details. So I got I'm, I got a little nitpicky for this one. Detail number one: in the movie, Mrs. Fig, the woman who babysits Terry uh, when the Dursleys don't want to take him out places, is cut from the movie. I won't get into why I think that's significant to avoid future spoilers. Detail number two: Peeves, the poltergeist who haunts Hogwarts, is not only cut from this movie, but is cut from the entire Harry Potter movie franchise, which is unfortunate. He's uh, he's a goon. He's like good comedic relief, uh, much like Fred, uh, Fred and George Weasley. J.K. took that as a <clears throat> challenge too, and included him way more. Wait, what? She took that as like a challenge. Oh, yeah? Because like they were like, oh, it's too expensive and difficult to do what you want to do with this poltergeist. Uh, and so they cut him out. And she was like, oh well, God. I'm going to include him way more in the story now. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was artful, Nick. <laughs> what? What did he do? Mm. Don't worry about it. I, over, filled, I overfilled my yeah. coke and I had to jump in there with my mouth. It. Uh, <laughs> and I had to jump in there with my mouth. No other option. <laughs> <laughs> you let it though, spill, but I don't want things to get sticky near Kevin's corner. Detail number three. In the book, uh, the first years who are called up to get sorted into their houses, McGonagall calls them up in alphabetical order by last name. In the movie, she just does it in random, ra any random fucking order that she wants to. How do you go from Malfoy to, to Granger to Weasley to Potter? To Potter? It doesn't make any huh? fucking sense. Get your yeah. shit together, movie That's McGonagall. Crazy. And then the last movie detail McGonagall. for this week is that uh, in the movie, there were two more rooms after the dangerous chess game that were cut that were protecting the stone. The first room was a room provided by Quirrell, which was uh, just a room with a giant troll that was already knocked out that Harry and Hermione go through. And then the second room that they uh, cut out was which I find more uh, interesting is the room that uh, Snape 
set up which uh, when they walk in there's like two walls of fire that block their entrance and uh, exit and in the middle of the room there's like a row of cups and it's uh, they're left with like a riddle and it's like oh like three of these are wine two of these are potion uh, two of these are poison one of these will let you go through the fire forward one of these will let you go back and one of these just does nothing and kind of gets gives like context clues of like there will always be poison left to the uh, uh, wine and stuff like that. Cool little moment, obviously, to uh, show showcase how clever Hermione is because she solves it very quickly. Uh, but uh, it's so they didn't expect two more kids to be joining their group. I'm like, well, this kid's real good at riddles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this kid, oh, oh Riddley Riddleston. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I, the Riddleston. <laughs> but it was a nice little detail I thought for for Snape as well because he didn't rely uh, his room on being about knowing what potions are, but more about riddles and logic and stuff mm-hmm. like that. About being smart. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this episode of Boss Baby's Book Corner. Give are there any me. other important details you think I missed? Leave them in the comments below. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you give this video a like, share with your friends who love Harry Potter, and subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, that wraps up Book Corner for this week. And I'll see you next week. But until next time, Wingardium Leviosa. There you fucking go. And now, the next podcast within a podcast. Real excited for this one. This is the Golden Snitches Get Stitches, a.k.a. the Cool Greg effect. Yeah. Andy. Cool Greg, I, we should probably work on a theme song for this because you're, you're way more lyrical than I am. All right, man, I'm we can th- think about it. <laughs> we can think about it next time, yeah. Cool right. Greg. Yo. What do you have to say about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? Dope movie. I definitely think you guys should see it if you haven't. And it's the first time you get to see Voldemort, which is hella sick. So you see him twice, so go for that, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Golden Stitches Stitches segment of the the show. Uh, We're not going to do Ragu Bagu in in Harry Potter interview. Because, yeah, it's. Also, there's only one bad guy for the next eight films. Uh, There's two. Two, right? There's two. (laughs) Right, kind of. <laughs> Actually, they're, they're, they're right. There is a lot. There, there are several lines. But we are going to do haiku and review. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Uh, haiku in review. Who Everybody now. <laughs> who is it? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write in your reviews in haiku form and they may get rid- read on this beautiful show. Just like Jacek did. He says, looking back on this, how do these kids learn to write? To do basic math. Well, they go to normal school until they're 11, right? We were discussing that earlier. Great I don't question. think we do. No, 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 no I don't think they, they do. Huh? Because... Well, I mean, you'll see more later, but like this isn't a plot. Like this doesn't move anything. But yeah. like they don't know anything about the Muggle world. Yeah, they really. Yeah. Do. And the Muggle like, world is like they just. It's just such a they're mystery. Very, they're very kept. Oh, because yeah. most of them are going home for the summer. To in, their in wizard, the wizard world. Wizarding home. world. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you have to assume there are other schools. There's like, like like a primary school. There, well, so there's like Muggle-born people that are like. Th- you know, have just lived a normal life until they got this letter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, they go to school. Like, isn't but like wizards? I don't know. This is a spoiler. But I don't isn't think it's, one of the kids her yeah. Hermione's parents are like yeah. dentists, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe they don't need models. wizard ma- or math there. No, well, you know, so there is they like have a, the equivalent of Google where they're like, how many is that? Is when Guardian yeah. Leviosa, fuck it, it counts. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the kids get like kind of like homeschooled to at yeah. least like know how to read and write. They're dumb. Well, wizards not the smartest. Like you know, maybe that's why Harry was the only one writing notes. Fair. Mm. The rest of them wow. didn't know how. I actually can enchant their quills to write notes for yeah. them. It's really cool. You'll see. Damn. Uh, Matt Edwards says, Quaffle and bludgers. The snitch is hella OP. Harry's got mad skills. <laughs> Quaffles and bludgers. <laughs> Jason also says, The sound mix is bad. The series improves so much. Wow, that child acting. And the nanobiologist has the final one today. CGI don't hold. Acting's not that great. But it's good to be home. It is. It is. I like that one. Uh, and now to to rank the movies, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is currently number one. Number one. one. Number, one. number one of the list. Number we'll, one. We'll see you guys next week uh, for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, what are the secrets? Secrets. <laughs> I wonder what the secrets are. Wow. It's exciting to find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. It's good. Right. Shit Until up, up. next week. Shit Adios, Cadavra. I hate you.